We have all, you have six of them in the house. <laughs> Where is where is Kosovan Khan? Okay. Where is she? Dr. Mintz is right here. Council members. Hi, how, how are you? Yeah, I'm doing good. Good to see you. Good evening, everyone. Um, Good evening, Council President. On behalf of the Patterson Municipal Council, I welcome you to the regular meeting of the Municipal Council. The meeting is now called to order. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Yes, Mr. President. Roll call for Municipal Council regular meeting of Ju June 10th, 2021 at 7 p.m. Oh, oh, oh. That mine? Maybe it wasn't mine. I'm sorry. Councilman Abdelaziz? Councilwoman Cotton? Councilwoman Davila? Present. Councilman Jackson? Here. Councilman Khalid? Present. Thank you. Councilman Mendez? Councilman Mims? Here. Councilman Velez? Thank you, Madam Clerk. I'm here. Yes. Thank you. Mr. President? Yes. Mr. President and Honorable Council Members, this evening we have with us to render the prayer, Honorable Vice President, Dr. Lelisa Mims, and to lead us in the flag salute the Honorable Councilwoman Ruby Ann Cotton, Councilman of the Fort Ward. Everyone, please rise for the prayer. Thank you. Yes, sir. And so as we come tonight, we come in oneness, we come in love, we come in unity, and we come in peace. Let us pray. God, our Father, we thank you because this is the day that you have made, and so we rejoice and we are glad in it. Every time we wake up in the morning is another opportunity to give praise. Every time we wake up in the morning is another opportunity to open our mouth and to say thank you. Every time we open our eyes and see another day is another day to love on our sisters and our brothers. As we come on tonight to have and to do the city's business on behalf of the great people of Patterson, I pray that there will be peace, there will be love, there will be unity, there will be harmony, and I pray that we will continue to go about doing that which is in the best interest of the city and the people of Patterson. 
We continue to pray for all of our employees. We pray for this administration. We pray for this council. We pray for all the residents. We pray for our students. And even during this time as school is about to come to a close, we pray for safety. We pray for protection. We pray for guidance and wisdom. And we pray for our clerks and our secretaries and all that we know to call those that are sick and shut in. We send up a special prayer for Lizzie on tonight. We're praying for a miracle. You said in your word that miracle signs and wonders, they follow those that believe. And we stand believing for a miracle for our poet laureate, Ms. Lizzie Estella. And this is what we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 States of America and to the Republic for which he stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We will now have a moment of silence for our troops and those who have lost loved ones. Thank you. Maybe sit it. You may be seated. Madam Clerk, will you please read the statement of compliance? Yes, Mr. President. Mr. President, can you hear me much better now? Yes. Okay. Statement of compliance with the open public meetings law, 2020 to 2021, meeting date, Thursday, June 10th, 2021, time 7 p.m. Adequate notice of this meeting was compiled and disseminated in accordance with the open public meetings law in the following manner. One, the annual notice of regular meetings and workshop sessions of the Municipal Council was compiled for the year 2020 to 2021 on or about July 1, 2020. Two, a schedule of the regular meetings and workshop sessions of the Municipal Council for the year 2020 to 2021 was duly transmitted on or about July 1, 2020 to the North Jersey Herald News, The Record, Arabic Voice, Italian Voice, Passe County Pulse, Dominicana News, Chris Creator International, El Especial, Patterson Press, the City Post News, and TAP into Patterson, in addition to any other publication duly requesting such notices. Three, the schedule of the regular meetings and workshop sessions of the Municipal Council for the year 2020 to 2021 was prominently posted in lobby of City Hall, first floor, in the place reserved for the announcements of this type. Four, the schedule of the regular meetings and workshop sessions of the Municipal Council for the year 2020 to 2021 was duly filed with the Municipal Clerk. Five, a copy of the schedule of regular meetings of the Municipal Council was mailed to any person who requested and pay the fee authorized by the Open Public Records Act. Mr. President. Thank you, Madam Clerk. You're welcome, sir. Do we have a motion for payment of bills? Thank you, Council President. I would like to make a motion for the payment of bills in the amount of $6,334,718.80. There is a payment to waste management with a reduction uh, for a fine that was given unto them for services not rendered to our residents. I make the motion, Council President. Discussion? Do we have a second? Second. Moved by Councilman Mims, second by Councilman Kalik. Uh, discussion? Uh, Councilman Council Velez? Yeah, Council President, if it is possible that um, the administration, uh, it was in the news, uh, in the newspaper. Um, Co Councilman, I think, I think the mics are a little down, um, Madam Clerk. Let me see. No, it's because they're not screaming. Joan, uh, Joan just said for Mr. Ming about the, she just did. Joan did. What is that? Joan told Mr. Ming that the mics are low. She okay. Did. She's well, that's working better. on it. Yeah, that's better. Go ahead, Councilman Velez. Um, so, so, so my question is to the administration, to the chair. Uh, administration, I know that um, the, uh, the uh, disposal company, garbage collection, uh, got hit with a $20,000 fine. 
Uh, did they already pay that 25, uh, 20,000 Wi-Fi? Can you, can you, can you hear? Because I, I don't think Mr. Ming is up there, though. All oh, the speakers are out on this side? Councilman. Oh, they're fixing it? All right, thank you. Councilman Velez, that amount is included. It was subtracted for the, from their payment. So it's reflected here in this one? Oh, okay. Someone is on there. Any other questions on the bills list? No. Thank you, Council President. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Yes, Mr. President. Roll call for payment to bills amount of six million three hundred and thirty four thousand seven hundred and eighteen dollars and eighty cents. Councilwoman Khan? Yes. Councilman Davila? Yes. Councilman Jackson? <coughs> A mere twenty thousand dollars out of a multi-million dollar contract and still being rendered the poor services that we have been receiving from this garbage company. I'm gonna remain consistent. Any bills list that has anything to do with payment of garbage company, my vote is no, Madam Clerk. Thank you. <laughs> Councilman Kalik? Yes. Councilman Mims? Yes. Councilman Villes? I would like to see. I would like to see uh, what's the ruling when this comes up to 20, if it's 30, 40, or in the future. Uh, so far, I go to vote yes at this point, but in the future, I want to see what is the scale, what, what method you're using to establish uh, a low fine on it. You know, um, I think we could, it's low here, but I guess in TV it's going to be loud. So um, that's, that's my request moving forward. What is the method they use to put, establish only $20,000? You should be um, in the basement. My vote is yes. You should be in the basement. Mr. President? Yes. The vote is six in favor, one against, two absent. The payment of the amount of $6,334,718.80 is hereby adopted. Council President, there's a COVID payment of bill. I would like to make the emotion in the amount of $4,800. The invoice um, and the details are attached. Do we have a second? Second. Second. Moved by Councilwoman Mims, second by Councilman Velez. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Yes, Mr. President. Roll call a COVID-19 payment of bills in the amount of $4,800. Councilwoman Cotton? Yes. Councilwoman Davila? Yes. Councilman Jackson? Yes. Mm -hmm. Councilman Kalik? Yes. Councilman Mendez? Good evening, Madam Clerk. Pass. Good evening. Councilman Mims? Yes, Madam Clerk. Councilman Velez? Knowing that this uh, funding is going real low, I just want to congratulate the uh, fire department, how they have utilized this COVID-19 funding to last up to this time. Congratulations how you manage this COVID-19 funding. My vote is yes. Councilman Mendez. Uh, thank you, Madam Clerk. And before my vote, I definitely want to take this quick moment to congratulate the health department. They're doing a very great job in uh, all the different locations. In the morning, in one section, in the afternoon, in another section of the city of Patterson, and I see a lot of people are attending to the vaccination program that they have. So my vote is yes, Madam Clerk. Thank you. Mr. President. Yes. Vote is eight in favor, one absent payment of bill for COVID-19 in the amount of $4,800 is hereby adopted. Madam Clerk, uh, thank you. Yes, sir. So the second reading ordinances, starting with number one. Yes, Mr. President. Next item in the agenda is our second reading ordinances. Public hearing is required in this ordinance, item number one, an ordinance amending partisan code sections 407-18 and 407-19. Addressing fewer use charges to provide for flat rate residential billing. Administration Ordinance 21020. So moved. So second. moved. Moved by Councilman Mendez, second, um, second by Councilman Kalik. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Pub uh, public hearing is public. required. Public hearing. Sorry, I apologize. Public portion. Public, public hearing. hearing. <laughs> public hearing. The public hearing, can I go ahead, Mr. President? Public hearing is now open for item number one. Anyone who wishes to address this uh, may do so now. See no one. Move, move to close. To close, Council President. Okay, uh, move to close by Councilman Velez and second by Councilman Davila. Roll call, Madam Clerk. To yes, close. Mr. President. Roll call to close the public hearing for item number one. Councilwoman um, Cotton. Yes. Councilman Davila. Yes. Councilman Jackson. 
Yes. Councilman Kali? Yes. Councilman Mendez? Yes. Councilman Mims? Yes. Councilman Villains? Yes. Mr. President? Yes. The vote is eight in favor, one absent. The public hearing is now closed for item number one. Roll call. Roll call, Madam Clerk. <laughs> yes, sir. Roll call and item number one for second reading. Councilwoman Cotton. Thank you, Madam Clerk. I have stated. Your mic. Oh, I'm sorry. Nobody heard a word I said, right? <laughs> oh, you heard me? <laughs> I'm sorry, but I, even on first reading, I feel that um, it should not be uh, flat rate, that it should be by volume, usage, uh, what you use um, for customers. I mean, we all have the exact same house, but we have different amount of people living in each of them. Uh, and it should be what we use. So with that being said, I voted no for first reading. I'm voting no for second reading. Thank you. Councilwoman Davila. I voted yes for the, uh, the first reading because I felt that when this was first introduced, the problem was with the administration and the way that they rolled it out. Uh, and it is obvious to us that there were individuals who at the time were paying over $400 and the administration, our BA, when she did the calculation, she actually lowered people who were already paying higher. So that in itself was an issue. And many people saw increases while others that shouldn't have seen increases, um, many saw increases and those that, that, that it, it became a, 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 a level, if I'm not mistaken, I think it was 240, Council President? Something to that nature across the board, am I correct? Yeah, so what happened is, uh, actually you're in the middle of a vote, I can't, yeah, we can't no, discuss the, it. The clarification in terms of numbers. Uh, so I feel that, I think this is the best route to take and I am going to support this flat rate and my vote is yes for Thank item you. number one. Thank you. Councilman Jackson. Thank you, Madam Clerk. So you're welcome, sir. Obviously there's quite a bit of dialogue going back and forth with poor information being disseminated by many parties that's not given the correct information. I've gotten a few calls from, from residents who are now concerned that their rates will be increased and they feel as if those individuals who have illegal basement and attic apartments that live next door to them who are utilizing a lot more, but the fact of the matter, we don't pay our sewer bill by consumption. We pay water by consumption. We don't pay our sewer bill by consumption. And, and the other side of it is, I'm, while I'm all in favor of fairly distributing this cost equally across the board to, to those people who are utilizing more services. The fact of the matter is the administration completely dropped the ball with this thing and residents was paying more and those organizations who we talked about targeting, so be it the hospital, nonprofits and things of that nature, they wind up seeing a decrease. So in order for, for me to be uh, willing to um, uh, support something that's gonna be based on consumption, the administration has to do a much better job, not only in, in presenting us a, a more sound plan, but <coughs> administering the plan as well. So at this time, I'm willing to support this to make sure that the number of residents that were impacted negatively can go back to um, paying something more comfortably. Um, lastly, I'm sorry, Council President, but um, I got a call from a resident saying that their one family house will be escalated up to $350 which is incorrect. That, that rate for a one family house is much lower. And so again, I'm hopeful that the administration as well as, all right, the administration will disseminate uh, more clear information to the residents. While you're doing these robocalls, campaigning and things of that nature, utilize it to disseminate proper information. My vote is yes, Madam Clerk. Thank you. Councilman Kalik. Thank, thank you, Madam Clerk. All the options that were presented to us by the administration, I think this is the best option, uh, flat rate. My vote is yes. Thank you. Councilman Mendez. Uh, thank you, Madam Clerk. I definitely believe that we're moving in the right direction by uh, basing, uh, charging our residential um, homeowners uh, based on the value of it, not based on value, but on the flat rate. Um, and I've been very vocal since this um, utility was created. It, it was created, it was a disaster from the beginning because of 
um, homeowners don't start seeing over 100% increase on the sewer bill. But now with this, just for the record, a single family, uh, it will pay $359 a year, divided by four quarter. Every quarter is gonna be $89.75. You get charged $100, you know that you're paying, they charge you, they charge you more. $89.75 for one family, and the two family, Six hundred eighty-two a year divided by four quarter is one hundred seventy dollars and fifty cent per quarter. Our homeowner they will know how much they're going to pay per quarter, and that's extremely important. But I think that the conversation should not end here. I think we have a lot more work to do when it comes to the sewer uh, utility. We definitely have to come back, uh, Madam BA, and start talking about you know those uh, uh, um, building county building uh, schools, uh, um, neighboring town. And we got to make sure that they pay their fair share, and we got to have the discussion based on the percentage and how we're going to build it. But we need to make sure that our neighboring towns that are connected uh, with our sewer pay what they're supposed to be paying uh, to the city of Patterson. Um, with that being said, my vote is yes, Madam Clerk. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Councilman Mames. And so um, from the first reading until now, I've made a request to the administration. I wanted to see. Um, an analysis of what the comparison would be with the flat rate to make um, a solid, you know, vote on tonight. So it is true that on one side there's going to be a reduction. So you look at some addresses, they're going to get some decreases, which is a good thing. But then on the other side, there's going to be some increases. And for me, if we're going to do it right, because we know that it was rolled out and it wasn't rolled out correctly. To me, it should have been where there would have been more recommendations presented. I know this is the only thing, um, this is one of the ones that has been selected, but when I think of some of the individuals that are living where their flow is not at a place where it goes to $358, maybe their bills used to be $224 or $250, this is a huge increase, and I know sometimes we can do the calculations and it seems low, but when you're thinking about seniors or a single mom who can't really afford uh, this increase of 50 or $60, it's a tough blow for them. So for me, it, to me, I just believe it should have been holistic on both sides. It should have been even killed where it wasn't just given one side a balance and the other side an increase. It should have been even killed. And because of that, um, I have to stand for all the residents in the, of the city of Patterson. And with that being stated, my vote is no. You know, we cannot have it both ways. You know, uh, in the past experience, I have seen that um, that we had a bundle uh, money, bond money, for cover our responsibility with the sewer uh, charges that we have from the Water Commission. The bill that used to send us every year, they used to bond to cover that bill. So we cannot have it both ways. You know. Director of Community Improvement is here. He could testify on this. Um, if you go around Patterson, we overcrowded all over. One family house has already turned into two family house. Illegally. Two family house is turned into four family house. Illegal. Three family house is turned into five family house. Illegal. Because if you have a three-family house with five bathrooms, what's going to happen? You got to have more consumption of water. So you imagine if this was volume, you have five toilets in a three-family house, you have more consumption of water, and if it would be volume, your bill is going to be higher. So we need to educate our residents, especially the landlords need to educate their tenants you know, how to um, manage your landlord bills. In the beginning, this was a controversial issue. We receive a lot of complaints with the volume situation, correct? Our phone was off the hook. What are you guys are doing? The presentation administration gave us was a promising one, but it turns into a nightmare in our city. Correct, Councilman Khalid? Now they present us a choice. And based on the practice that we see in the past, I think this is the better choice that we could move forward. So my vote is yes. 
Thank you. Mr. President? So listen, you don't have to be a financial expert to, I, I wanna ask people at home that are watching and the ones that are here present today. I wanna know how is it that you're increasing a budget by $6 million, right? You're basically adding $6 million of billing to a budget. You have the same amount of users and we ended up reducing some users' fees. Example, I understand the administration, you know, they're correcting what they said now that X amount of people are gonna see an increase, but remember, let's go back to the inception. Before we created the utility, we, we have approximately 7,000 homes that were paying 224. Pay attention, about 7,000 homes that were paying 224. We also had seven, uh, 7,000 one-family homes. Let me start over. 7,000 one-family homes, approximately, that were paying 224. We also have approximately 7,000 two-family homes that were paying 424. That was before we created the sewer utility, right? You see that? Two families were paying 424. One family was paying 224. That was before we removed $6 million from the regular budget and put it into the utility budget so it could cover, so the utility could cover its own expense with the intent of making properties that are not taxpayers to pick, you know, to contribute more into that expense that we were not covering through the sewer. I hope you're following me. The administration at the time, and I remember this was a big argument for about three months. I didn't agree on, on the using volume. They were recommended by an, an expert that they hired that they should go with volume but not every city is created equal, right? Something that might work for, so, for a town doesn't mean it's gonna work for another. So what ended up happening is all those two family homes that were paying 424 were reduced to 224. They were put at the same level as the one family. Now they started measuring based on consumption. And like Councilman Jackson stated, not all the water that is consumed go through the sewer. And on top of that, the rainwater goes through the sewer. So you're gonna send a bill to whoever's in the heavens, in the clouds, uh, you know, they're also going in the water and it's going through our sewer, right? We have a, that's, that's the type of system that we have in place. So now we're in a situation a year later, yes, some people are, might see an increase because they should have seen an increase when the $6 million was moved from one place to the other. It's like telling people right now, follow me, and this is not a jab at another entity that we have in the city. This, I'm just using them as an example because it's recent. It's like the school district raising the levy $20 million and telling people that they shouldn't see an increase. Now, Arrow was on the board with me. It's impossible. It's impossible. So for some council members to believe that, oh, I'm not voting on this. You voted on an increase when you created the utility. And it wasn't an increase. In a perfect world, our taxpayers should have benefited from this because they should have saw a tax decrease. <clears throat> and the sewer increase would have been applied also to the non-taxpayers, and that didn't happen. So, so I just want to make that clear because I know it's political time soon and, and people got to start saying, oh, I didn't vote on this. Well, if you didn't vote on this, because you didn't understand it. And I respect people's votes. But it's because someone voted Someone voted when we was created, and I don't know how in, in this world someone would think that if you increase billing, if you have 10 people in this room and, you, and, and we're all paying 1,000 each, and I'm telling you, well, you guys are gonna have to pay 10,000 more. Well, if it's only 10 of us, we all should see an increase. Nobody should see a decrease, it's only 10. Or maybe when we created the utility, was there more users that were added to it? Because I, I'm not sure. So it is that simple. You know, I'm not questioning people's vote. You could vote however you want. But I just want the public to understand what's actually going on. That's, that's my job here. My vote is yes, Madam Clerk. Thank you, Mr. President. Vote is six in favor, two against, one absent. Item number one is hereby adopted on second reading. Next, item number two. Yes, number two, yeah. Madam Next Clerk. item is item number two for second reading. Public hearing is required on item number two, an ordinance designating Henry Street between Wayne Avenue and Redwood Avenue as a one-way street northeast bound. Public Works Ordinance 21021. So move, second. second. Moved by Councilman Kalik, second by Councilman Mendes and Councilwoman um, uh, Davila. Public hearing? Ro roll call, Madam, uh, actually public hearing. 
Seeing no move to close. Second. Roll call, Madam Clerk, to close the public hearing. Yes, Mr. President. Um, Councilman Mendez and Councilwoman Davila. Yes. Roll call to close the public hearing in item number two. Councilwoman Carton. Yes. Councilwoman Davila. Yes. Councilman Jackson. Yes. Councilman Kali. Yes. Councilman Mendez. Yes. Councilman Mims. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. The vote is seven in favor, two absent. Public hearing is now closed for item number two. Roll call on item number two, Madam Clerk. Yes, Mr. President. Roll call on item number two for second reading. Councilwoman Carton? Yes. Councilman Davila? Yes. Councilman Jackson? Yes. Councilman Kali? Thank you, Madam Clerk. This is a um, very narrow two-way street in the second ward. Uh, I believe by uh, making this a one-way street, you will eliminate a lot of side swiping and accident. Um, this is a very good measure uh, is taken by this council. Uh, my vote is yes. Thank you. Councilman Mendez? Yes, Madam Clerk. Councilman Mims? Yes. Mr. President? Yes. The vote is seven in favor, two absent. Item number two is hereby adopted on second reading. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Will, can we do number three at this time? Yes, sir. Next item is item number three for second reading. Public hearing is required on this item. Item number three reads an ordinance designating James Street between Wayne Avenue and Rison Avenue as a one way street southwestbound. Department of Public Works, Ordinance 21022. Second. So Moved move by Kalik. Councilman Kalik, second by Councilman Davila. Um, public public hearing. hearing. Yeah, public hearing, Madam Clerk. Public hearing is now open for item number three. Anyone who wishes to speak may do so now. See no move to close. Second. Move to, mo move to close by Councilman Mendez. Second uh, by Councilman Davila. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Yes, to Mr. Close. President. Roll call to close the public hearing for item number three. Councilwoman Cotton? Yes. Councilman Davila? Yes. Councilman Jackson? Yes. Councilman Kali? Yes. Councilman Mendez? Yes, Madam Clerk. Councilman Mims? Yes. Mr. President? Yes. The vote is seven in favor, two absent. The public hearing is now closed for item number three. Number four, Madam Clerk? No, oh, the final oh. vote for number three. That was the public hearing I just closed. I apologize. Okay. Roll call on item number three? Yes, sir. Roll call on item number three for second reading. Councilwoman Khan? Yes. Councilman Davila? Yes. Councilman Jackson? Yes. Councilman Kali? Yes. Councilman Mendez? Yes. Councilman Mims? Yes. Mr. President? Yes. The vote is seven in favor, two absent. Item number three is hereby adopted on second reading. Number four, Madam Clerk? Yes, sir. Next item is item number four for second reading. Public hearing is required on this item. An ordinance establishing always stop control at the intersection of Patterson Avenue and James Street, Department of Public Works, Ordinance 21023. So move, second. second. Move by Councilman Colleague, second by Councilman Mendez and Councilman Davila. Uh, public hearing, Madam Clerk? Public hearing is now open for item number four. Anyone who wishes to speak may do so now. See no one, Mr. President. Seeing none, move to close. Moved by Councilman Davila, second by Councilman Cotton. Roll call to close, Madam Clerk. Yes, roll call to close the public hearing for item number four. Councilwoman Cotton? Councilman Davila? Yes. Councilman Jackson? Yes. Councilman Kali? Yes. Councilman Mendez? Yes. Councilman Mims? Yes. Mr. President? Yes. The vote is seven in favor, two absent. The public hearing is now closed for item number four. Roll call, Madam Clerk? Yes, Mr. President. Roll call on item number four for second reading. Councilwoman Cotton? Yes. Councilman Davila? Yes. Councilman Jackson? Yes. Councilman Kali? Yes. Councilman Mendez? Yes. Councilman Mims? Yes. Councilman Velez, item number four for second reading. It's the all week control for uh, Patterson Avenue and James Street. My, my vote is yes. Thank you. Mr. President? Yes. The vote is eight in favor, one absent. Item number four is hereby adopted on second reading. Number five. Number five, Madam Clerk? Yes, sir. Next uh, item is item number five for second reading. Public hearing is required. An ordinance establishing all way stop control in the section of Manchester Avenue and James Street, Department of Public Works, Ordinance 21024. So, more second. second. 
Moved by Councilman Kalik, second by Councilman, da uh, Councilman David and Councilman Mendez. Uh, public portion, Madam Clerk. Public hearing is now open for item number public five. Hearing. Anyone who wishes to speak may do so now. See, See no move to close. Move, by, move to close by Councilman Mendez, second by Councilman Cotton. Roll call, Madam Clerk, to close. Yes, Mr. President. Roll call to close the public hearing for item number five. Councilwoman Cotton? Yes. Councilwoman Davila? Yes. Councilman Jackson? Yes. Councilman Kali? Yes. Councilman Mendez? Yes. Councilman Mims? Yes. Mr. President? Yes. I'm sorry, Councilman Velez. Thank you. I'm President, okay? <laughs> Ma Madam Clerk, I know. I know. Hi. You, you like, you know, I'm here. <laughs> Thank you. I feel you. My word is yes. Thank you, Mr. President. Yes. The vote is eight in favor, one absent. Pub public hearing is closed for item number five. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Yes, sir. Um, roll call and item number five for second reading. Councilwoman Khan? Yes. Councilwoman Davila? Yes. Councilman Jackson? Yes. Councilman Kali? Uh, this location is uh, right by uh, school number 19, the corner of school 19. Um, you will. Definitely, you will increase the safety of our children. My vote is yes. Thank you. Councilman Mendez? Yes, Madam Clerk. Councilman Mims? Yes. Councilman Velez? Yes, Madam Clerk. Mr. President? Yes. The vote is eight in favor, one absent. Item number five is hereby adopted on second reading. Number six, Madam Clerk? Yes, and next we have our first reading ordinance, and I, no public hearing is required. And item number six. An ordinance establishing a commercial loading zone and Grand Street between Mill Street and Jervis Street, Department of Public Works. Move. Second. Sorry, Council President. Um, moved by Good Councilman day. Velez. Uh, second by <coughs> Councilman Sorry. Mendez. Discussion, Councilman Jackson. That's Councilman Mendez. I yeah. think that was Councilman Mendez. Yeah. Yes. Thank There's you. There's still a misprint on this, uh, on this item. Uh, it's supposed to have been uh, Councilman Velez mentioned it the other day. It's not supposed to be on Grand Street. No, it's actually no. supposed to be on Mill. No, no we clarified that already. So what happened is that there was a uh, loading zone close to the traffic light in Jersey, so they were going to move that one back and will serve the two corners. So um, uh, we agree with uh, Han Chow that it's going to stay in the middle. You know the one that's close to the liquid store? So because it's too close to the traffic light, it's gonna be pushed back um, after the driveway of the dealer. So it's gonna serve the whole block. So we agreed to put it there on Grand Street. The one in Grand Street never had an ordinance established. So, um, well, it established it yeah, correct. So Mr. What, Mr. What, Mr. President, if yeah. I may. Yeah. Mr. President, we did put in the request, Councilman Jackson. Um, we had um, included Mr. Chow. Hong Chung Yu, Corporation Council, and he, we did put in the request that Councilman Velez had. So there was a final from the from Corporation, from the Mr. Chow, um, Hong Chung Yu, that it remains the same. He went out and he looked and he had some corrections. He said he, the, the title was okay, everything was okay. He spoke with Councilman Velez and he came to a final agreement as well. Corporation so, Council was included. So, but we did put the request in. Once again, you know, um, I, I'm, I'm not sure why it wasn't brought to my attention sooner. Um, obviously, I'm not the, the council person of that ward, but I do own a business on that block, and it was a request by business owners that are there. Now, the um, understanding the traffic flow, the business that does receive more of the uh, deliveries at the other side of the block being the, the, um, the, the liquor store, the grocery store that's on that corner, the two rest, the two businesses across the street. Now they have to move it further down, closer to a used car parking lot. And then the business on the corner still doesn't get the adequate um, uh, space that they that they utilize, need to utilize for their business. That's why the whole intent was to put it on Mill Street. It's very disappointing because, you know, here we, here we have again, you know, uh, I'm not sure what exactly the experience level of Mr. Hung Chao Yu, but here you have another person who not, who's not from the community who obviously doesn't have a clear understanding of the needs of, of certain uh, conditions in the community. And um, I, I don't understand why it was, why it was pushed, pushed this way. Was there a, consent, uh, a survey done of the businesses? Were the businesses 
at least spoken to that was in the that's in the area? It, what what happened, Councilman? That the initial the initial request was to put it on Mill Street, but between his dry, the driveway of that business and the traffic light, it will not fit there because you have to have 25 feet from the crosswalk, 50 feet from the uh, traffic light. So the traffic engineer noticed that the loading zone on Grand Street by the liquid store, okay, was not an ordinance to establish there. Somebody put it there way back in, I don't know when, okay? So they decide to serve the whole block they decide to put it in the middle of the block that will hold uh, the restaurant that requested it and also will serve the three or four stores in, um, that is in that same block. So um, saying that, it was beneficial to put it in the Grand Street side where it had been one that was no ordinance established. So now this one will have it ordinance established and um, the individuals that knows that was a loading zone there could utilize um, that the legal one that is going to be so established there. Once again, Councilman, and not to prolong this, respecting your opinion and perspective, my simple question was, was the businesses whole? Was the business owners, meaning the, 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 um, the liquor store there, the owner of the businesses, were they polled on the utilization of the loading zone. We're, we're making an assumption here. We're going by someone who's, who's, you know, giving a professional opinion without even having an understanding of how these businesses operate. First and foremost, the first um, decision, we can pull it, Council President. It, it doesn't matter. So, yeah, I was going to say that that if if we need to have, you know, the day of the meeting, discussion. this discussion, um, why can't we just pull it, right? Um, this situation in this street has been like that for we never had one a loading uh, zone there, so I would have hundreds of years. Um, it, it does I, have. I, a I think they could it wait. It does have let's a loading just, zone. Let, let's just let's just pull it, and then bring it back. Let's bring it back to the committee. Bring it back to the committee. Councilman, it has a loading zone. Councilman, I understand what you're you know presenting right now, but if some of your colleagues still have some questions, I think that you should have the courtesy at least to say, you know what. This could wait another two weeks, or you know, to to to, to entertain it again. Councilman um, Mendes. Yes, definitely, I agree, Council President. I think that uh, we could bring it back to the committee, and I would like to invite Councilman Jackson to the next uh, committee meeting, DPW committee meeting, okay. uh, to have a conversation with Mr. Han Chow. He explained the legal ramification of putting the loading zone on the specific location that you're requesting. But I think that it, it, it will be important if you hear from him and we have that discussion at the committee meeting. Thank you. Do you want to remove your motions? Who, who, who moves this item? Mm, I think Council Member Les, uh, uh, move it. I second, I believe so. Your motion. Yeah. Whoever don't know about parking 25 feet away or crosswalk and from the traffic light 50 feet, All right. you know, I don't understand. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Uh, Council President. I haven't removed my motion. Well, we so understood, but you know, I ask if we could stop the discussion. We have a, a, an agenda, a lengthy agenda. Um, you could, you know, have, have the final comments. And if your wish is not to remove your motion and the other council member doesn't wish to remove their second, then we're going to proceed. So after your statement, let me know what your action is going to be. No, you're the council president. You call me off. Go ahead. No, no, no. I apologize. I'm not going to go arguing with you, brother. Here we go again. No, he will go Council again. President. You disrespectful a lot from that chair, sir. You don't want to answer back. So you're going to push a button. You're ready to push a button the right way. Council President. Point of order, Council, Council President. President. Council President, Council President, acknowledge me. Councilman Davila. Council President, uh, if and to the Corporation Council, uh, Actually, it's actually to Madam Clerk. Madam Clerk, if the person who moved it removes their motion, do you also need to have the, the second removed? Yes. There's a motion on the floor in there because we're taking it also. Oh, we, so we just need it to withdraw. It? Yes, I did. Okay. So if he doesn't remove it, so then we vote on it? No. It, it, I was going to remove it. But the thing is, I want to explain something, and then he cut me off. So I want to cooperate with his request 
and the concern of my colleagues to bring it to back to the workshop, the uh, to the committee, with no problem. I'm an easy guy, but when you get interrupted, you get frustrated. That's the thing. So I want to remove my motion for further discussion as the request of my colleagues. Thank I you, Councilman. Thank you. And Councilman Mendez. Thank you, Mr. Pre yes, I, I removed uh, the second motion. Okay, so we just take it off and it's back to committee and they'll let us know when we get. Okay, thank you. Um, Mr. President, may I continue with seven? Yes, number seven. Yes, sir. Next item is item number seven for first reading. No public hearing is required. An ordinance designating Putnam Street between East 16 and East 18th Street as a one-way street eastbound Department of Public Works. So move. Second. 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 Councilwoman Cotton's Ward. Yes. Correct. Move it. Right. Mm -hmm. Second. Second. Who we'll moved it? Cotton. Councilwoman Cotton. Mm -hmm. Councilwoman Cotton. Moved by Councilwoman Cotton. Second, Second by, by Councilwoman Davila Mendez. And who else? <laughs> who else moved it? Uh, Velez. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Yes, Mr. President. Roll call in item number seven for first reading. Councilwoman Cotton? Yes. <coughs> Councilman Davila? Yes. Councilman Jackson? Yes. Councilman Kali? Yes. Councilman Mendez? Yes, Madam Clerk. Councilman Mintz? Yes. Councilman Velez? My vote is yes. Mr. President? Yes. The vote is eight in favor. One absent, item number seven is hereby adopted at first reading. Second reading will be held at the next regular meeting of June 22nd, 2021 at 7 p.m. Number eight, uh, number, number, eight. number eight. Next item is item number eight for first reading. No public hearing is required. An ordinance designating Warren Street between East 16th Street and East 18th Street as a one-way westbound Department of Public Works. Move it. Second. Second. Moved by Councilman Cotton, second by Councilman David and Councilman Mendez. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Roll call in item number eight for first reading. Councilwoman Cotton? Yes. Councilman Davila? Yes. Councilman Jackson? Yes. Councilman Kali? Yes. Councilman, Councilman Mendez? Yes. Councilman Mims? Yes. Councilman Velez? Yes. Mr. President? Yes. The vote is eight in favor, one absent. Item number eight is hereby adopted on first reading. Second reading will be held at the next regular meeting of June 22nd, 2021 at 7 p.m. Madam Clerk, will we do the consent agenda um, before we do entertain the public portion? Yes, yes, Mr. President. Next item on the agenda is our consent and agenda items. All matters listed on the consent agenda are considered to be routine by the council and will be enacted by one motion. The items listed on the consent agenda are numbers 10 through 22. Any item may be removed from the consent agenda by the request of any council member, and if so removed, will be treated as a separate so matter. Move. Second. Second. Move. Second, Second by Councilman Mims and Councilman Mendez. Roll call, Madam Clerk. I'm sorry, Mr. President. Um, motion by Councilman Velez. I'm sorry. Second by? Mims and Mendez. Mims and Mendez. Mendez, thank you. Roll call on items number on the consent agenda 10 through 22. Councilwoman Cotton? Yes. Councilman Davila? Yes. Councilman Jackson? Yes. Councilman Kali? Yes. Councilman Mendez? Yes. Councilman Mims? Yes. Councilman Velez? Yes. Mr. President? Yes. The vote is eight in favor, one absent. Items 10 through 22 on the consent agenda hereby adopted. Thank you, Madam public Clerk. Portion, um, we have the public portion, portion at this time, Madam Clerk. Mr. President, let's give me a second, please, sir. Sure. We have to get the paper from downstairs, Mr. President. Didn't get up here as yet. Did you want to entertain with any other item in the meantime we'll while entertain, we wait? We're going to entertain one of the one of one yeah, of the, the non-consent items. Correct. Which one would you? Twenty-three. Twenty-seven. Twenty-seven. Okay. Is that okay, Mr. President? Twenty-seven, Madam Clerk. Yes. Next item is item number twenty-seven, and and this resolution reads. Resolution honoring Vera Ames Garns, former Fort Ward Councilwoman, on the occasion of her 74th birthday. 
This resolution is sponsored by Councilwoman Dr. Lelisa Mims and Councilwoman Ruby Khan, co-sponsored by Councilwoman Maritza Davila and Councilman Velez. Resolution 21304. Second. So Second. Second. So it's going to be moved by Councilwoman Mims, Mims. Councilwoman Cotton. Second. And it's going to be seconded by Councilwoman Davila and Councilman Velez. Thank you, Council President. Thank you, Council President. Thank you. Thank you, Council President. So, Madam Clerk, um, roll call. Yes, Mr. President. Roll call on item number 27 for oh, approval. Right. Councilwoman Cotton. Thank you, Madam Clerk. I You're just welcome. want to say to my Councilwoman out there, I'm not quite sure if you're watching TV or not, or but I just want to say her birthday was June the 8th. Wishing her a happy birthday, um, celebrating her 74 years of being here. Um, she truly, truly has been an inspiration to me. I have been working alongside of her for the last 30 years, um, doing many, many different events. Um, it's about, um, to me, working together. And I truly was able to work closer with Councilwoman Ain, because I always say, once a Councilwoman, you're always a councilwoman. So with that being said, Councilwoman Vera Ames, I wish you a happy birthday. We look forward to partying on June 13th uh, for your 74th birthday party. Madam Clerk, my vote is yes. Thank you, Councilwoman. Councilwoman Davila. <laughs> I met Councilwoman uh, Vera Ames many, many years ago. I wasn't even thinking about running. I remember when I decided that I wanted to run, I was told she was one of the individuals that I needed to speak to. Uh, moving on, um, shared many of her, I know that you continue the tradition, Councilwoman Cotton, but the Thanksgiving dinner, um, always uh, the food drives, and you know, I really look up to her. Um, she's definitely one of our giants. Uh, happy birthday to you, your 74th birthday. I, I look forward to celebrating with you on Sunday. Thank you to NJCDC for hosting and the rest of the partners as well. Councilwoman Cotton, thank you for the invitation as well. Um, and I do have to say something to you, Councilwoman Cotton. Okay. When Vera decided that she was going to retire, I remember her saying, I need you to support the person I'd like to see in the fourth ward. Mm -hmm. And that is something that I won't forget. So with that said, thank you for all that you've done. You're definitely, and we're definitely a special uh, councilwoman in the fourth ward. Yeah. I know that the fourth ward loves you. I'm actually looking forward to doing more than just this resolution. I know this is just not for her birthday, yeah. but we've been talking about yeah. doing something for her. And I look forward to, within the next month or two, us discussing exactly what that is. So with that said, Madam Clerk, my vote is yes. Thank you. Councilman Jackson. Thank you, Madam Clerk. For the hardest fighter in the history of uh, Patterson City Council, the longest tenured, um, her name speaks for herself. Her, her, <laughs> her, her, the job that she's done has, has spoken for itself. I'm, I'm honored to be a part of being able to approve this this item. Um, she's been you know, a mentor for many, many years and continues to do so. Um, so, Madam Ames, congratulations and, and great job, guys, for allowing her to smell her flowers while she's still with us. And I'll see you Sunday. Um, <laughs> the thing that sticks out for me is when she talked about having collard greens and candy yams and and uh ken morris is going back and forth with us so i'm hoping there'll be some collard greens and candy yams at this party on sunday but uh my, madam clerk my vote is yes thank you councilman Khalid. happy birthday councilwoman my vote is yes councilman mendez uh, thank you madam clerk definitely let me take this uh, special moment to wish happy birthday to our great legendary vera ams a, a true fighter in our community <laughs> Uh, never stopped fighting for the 4-4 and the entire city of Patterson also. And she always had a positive attitude. Uh, I had the opportunity to spend a great time with her. Even when, she's, uh, she, when she was sick, she was out there uh, fighting and advocating for people. So uh, once again, congratulations. And my vote is yes, Madam Clerk. Thank you. Councilman Mims. Happy birthday, Councilwoman Ames. So for me, Councilwoman Ames was my babysitter. Her and my mom are best friends. She made my mom's wedding dress. Her and Councilwoman Dixon, Councilwoman Maria Magda are a few of the women and they are the reasons why I'm here. 
in this seat in the political arena. So Councilman Ames, as someone that's born in the fourth ward, who you have counsel guided, and I know you're watching because I made sure you were on to watch. Um, this is something that you deserve. So I want to thank uh, Bob Garashi for reaching out to Councilman Cotton and myself to ensure that this resolution was done so that we can honor her. She deserves everything. She is um, the Hall of Famer when it comes to the longest serving person on the city council. She deserves everything that she gets and then some. My vote is yes. Thank you. Councilman Villay. Well, listening to all my colleagues, uh, their remarks, you know, I learned a lot from Councilwoman Vera Ames. Um, my colleagues say she was a fighter for her ward. Probably Ernest Rocker is going to remember this, and people in this council will remember. Not only her work, ward, she stood up for the injustice situation that was happening in the border of Prosser Park in Patterson. I don't know if you recall that. And she stood up there. She, she didn't care. She fight for the community at that point. And she fight a lot. And one of the things I learned is that anybody that choose to come to that podium, you better come with the right facts. Because she used to say, you got to listen to me. And uh, she would cross the point and uh, do the right thing. Councilwoman Rivera Ames decided to move from the fourth ward, the great fourth ward, to move to the greatest fifth ward. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, thank you for being my constituent. Uh, I know you're watching, right? Get close to the TV. Kiss for you. God bless you. Happy birthday. My vote is yes. Thank you, Mr. President. So first of all, I want to thank Vera Ames for all the years of service that she dedicated to this uh, city. Um, while this discussion started, you know, I started reminiscing all the years that I, I was on that end, you know, with Ernie, with Elvis. Uh, watching the meeting from that end, you know, and, and just noticing how Vera was always the same person meeting after meeting. And she was persistent and she was a true fighter. And I just want to, you know, wish her a happy birthday and, and just wish her uh, many, many, many years of uh, um, uh, many, many birthdays to come. My vote is yes. Thank you, Mr. President. Vote is eight in favor, one absent. Item number 27 is hereby adopted. Mr. President, if I may, Councilman Ames had forwarded me her invite, and I forwarded it to all the council members, so please look in your email. She's inviting everyone to her birthday party. I think it's on Sunday. It was sent to everyone. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Clerk. I don't remember. <laughs> um, can we open the public portion now, Madam Clerk? Yes, sir. The public portion is now open, Mr. President, and council, and our council members, we have Six speakers. Our first speaker is Ms. Tatiana Portugal. Ms. Portugal, please come to the podium. You state your name and address. Good evening. Good evening. Um, so I just wanted to respond to your comments after what was said at the last council meeting. Um, firstly, Ms. Davia, correct? Um, Davia? Yes, I'm not fully aware of the procedures to the T, but I do know there's not supposed to be open dialogue. What's not fair is how you guys know the procedures and as well bend them the way you like by speaking over one another or going over your time limit to speak, among other things. You guys, do those th you guys do those things because it's situational, and if I'm capable of understanding that, so should you be capable of understanding where I came from. It came from the emotions and passions I was feeling, and I felt to take that leap of faith because as I said before, I didn't want to leave with assumptions about the mayor when he could have provided me a feeling of relief. And frankly, other people would have liked to hear it too. Even you, Ms. Davia, if you go back and watch the meeting again, you will see yourself saying, he knows, he knows, to the council president. You didn't immediately oppose me trying to have an open dialogue. Again, I asked you to ask questions instead of assuming I didn't know better. I started off by saying the meeting was giving me anxiety, and my actions thereafter stem from that. I don't think any of you took that seriously, and it's just those little things and people that I was talking about that you got to worry about, too. 
And just like you told me I need to understand the procedures despite my anxious feelings and wanting to have my questions answered, you guys should as well understand your own procedures and practices and respect them like you expect us to regardless of your frustrations and passions. But genuinely, I will understand when you bend them a little bit because sometimes you just feel justified or need to finish what you were trying to say. And I hope you reciprocate that respect with those who try to do their due diligence. Secondly, we, yeah, we don't know what goes on on a daily basis. And that's literally why people wonder if and what things are getting done on a daily basis. And that's the transparency I'm trying to promote because it can help us understand and help you as well in regards to the right people to be held accountable instead of blaming the person who did all they can. Mike Williams was explaining this and giving an example to you on G. Greyer's Facebook post asking about um, how the council members felt about the mayor's budget. And Council President, you actually started getting transparent with us by starting off saying, I've never said this publicly. And then the comments you made afterward are what I, and I don't want to speak on everyone else, but that's the stuff that I want to hear. Those instances where they made resolutions and ordinances to try to push the power away from the council. Explain those instances in detail. Shine light on those things. You said something about people don't care who's responsible for cleaning the streets or responsible for monitoring and putting a plan together to address public safety. And I ask you to please be careful with your choice of words, because it's not that some don't care who's responsible and then choose to just go to you to voice their opinions and concerns. You're all getting blamed because people either don't know who to blame or because you're the only one they're able to get into contact with. I hear your frustration, all of your frustrations, and I'm not trying to make it harder. I want to come here to promote transparency and ask questions, but I only have three minutes, so I really just want to respond to your comments. Please let me finish. I, it was only going to be this. Lastly, you also mentioned, I hate to put it this way, but we're like a dysfunctional family. And dysfunctional by definition means not operating normally or properly. If you think it's going to continue dysfunctionally, then for the sake of the people, there needs to be resignations. Not because you don't have the passion or you're not doing anything, but simply because we need people who, communicate, who can communicate better with each other. And Councilman Jackson, I'm aware it's not always going to be rainbows and sunshine. But my vision of an office where there's better communication, understanding, and cooperation is not far-fetched at all. And to tell me otherwise just shows the need for people in this position who also envision that and work towards that by prioritizing that type of environment. Councilman Mendez, thank you for just recognizing what was said and reiterating that people are hurt and not all services and not getting the services they deserve as taxpayers. Um, Ms. Mims, it doesn't just sometimes appear that you guys have issues or personal problems against each other. It does appear that way. And that's why your relationship with one another and the ability to efficiently work together is another service we as taxpayers deserve and pay for. You please. Council President, I was happy to hear you agree that the discussions here shouldn't be like it was at that meeting, which is why it shouldn't have continued here. I recognize you guys try setting up meetings and you, you feel like you should get that on record and put it out there to prove how many times you have tried. Record those meetings once you do get those meetings and try how can we hold the mayor accountable. And just actually, I do have one question, just more importantly. You, um, swear to God. Can you wrap um, it up with a question if you don't mind? I just was. Is that a respect to the other ones that are speaking right be, you know, after you? But please. Uh, I was. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I have a question. Who? Um, so in regarding the parks, who do I talk to about like dethatching and reseeding them? Would that be like to public, like if I have public works questions, like do I just go straight to them or do I go to the people of the park, like the ward, like you know, like. You, you have a public works director, he was here right now, you could just pull him to the side and. Um, but is that who we talk to about yes. like, hey, can you. No, you, you bring it to us, we'll talk to him, you bring it to the administration, they're supposed to address it with him. Um, and that's what I meant before, you know. We'll, we'll address your concerns after everyone speak. Okay, um, just one last thing. Oh, never mind. All right, well, yeah, since Thank I'm just you. here, Ms. Ruby Common, I was at uh, <laughs> Ms. Barbara's Ms. Park Diana, trying to. I'm gonna, I'm, Thank you, I allow this today, but you gotta understand, there is, there is other people also that. You know, it's three minutes. The, the 12 years that I've been coming to council meetings, I had the same passion that you did, but I knew I had to stick to the three minutes. Sometimes I was allowed an additional 15, two, 20 seconds. Two, two. Um, so please, uh, next speaker, Madam Clerk. Ernest Rucker Patterson. No, Mr. President, he's not the next speaker. <coughs> Who's the next speaker? I'm sorry. Mr. President, next speaker is Ms. Tanisha Green. That's <laughs> it. That's okay. Hello, everyone. 
Good evening. Um, my name is Tanisha Green, and I was <laughs> I was born and raised here. Um, up until a couple of months, I was basically a hostage. Huh? It's on. It's on. The mask. The thing is, it has to do with a mask, Mr. Ming. Okay. Good. I was I was a hostage in Rhode Island. Um, I called to the mayor office because I didn't know how to get home um, to Patterson, New Jersey. But um, somebody in the mayor's office was saying that um, um, the mayor would not allow for them to cross jurisdiction to actually get me out of being a hostage um, at Rhode Island. Okay, I found my way back here by using social media. That's the only way I was able to escape from Rhode Island. Okay, in the midst of all of this, I've been pressing charges constantly downtown at the police station and at the um, courthouse because the same people is following me now. I came to this council meeting because it gets more disgusting, more degrading, and right now we are living it. I have two girls. My, um, my sister is Elizabeth. We live on 182 Lawrence Street. And with the guy, his, his name is John Collins. He came and put cameras around the perimeter and also cameras where so that you could see directly in the house. He done gave people around the area um, access to see us take showers, use the bathroom, and my, my daughter. I actually overheard um, the guy talking about my daughter breast and she's only 11. So when I went to the police station, so many times I even called to the, um, to the chief of police about the matter. They, I, I said it, it need to have a search warrant because the people from Rhode Island keep on like constantly harass me and I'm scared. I was a hostage in that state for a long time. And to get back home, it, it's like I'm scared all the time. Um, the, the people downstairs for my sister, I believe that they are associated with those folks. They actually came up not too long ago and progressed that they was going to kidnap me. They did a, um, illegal surgery on me. Um, some brain stimulation surgery. I had to go to St. Joe's the other day because it was like I was feeling um, like some type of trauma to my body. I didn't even know that they did this illegal surgery on me um, in Rhode Island, and that's why they've been constantly stalking and harassing me so they can take me back and, and I guess, um, remove whatever they put inside me, whatever. But I went to St. Joe's and St. Joe's located the, the piece that they put in me. It was some type of locator that's, that's actually in my stomach right now. And I have a disc of it in my bag because St. Joe's trying to um, do a surgery on me. But it's, it's like, it's, it's hard. I don't know what to do next. Okay, cool. Yeah, um, can you rep? Th thank you. Is there someone here that could? Della, you want to please? She'll speak to you on the side. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, Madam. Yes, Mr. S Mr. President. Next speaker is Mr. Rucker. Mr. Ernest Rucker. Uh, okay. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening. Ernest Rucker, Patterson, New Jersey. Uh, I want, before I, I go into what I want to go into, the young lady that was just up here speaking, how many times have I come to this council and begged you guys to attempt to work together? We are suffering in this city in ways that you don't understand. I was in total with a day. And I looked at the streets and the cleanliness and the well-kept lawns. And I rode back into Patterson and got depressed. 
Why do I have to live like this? Why do I have to live with the dirt, the garbage, the drug addicts, the homeless, and everybody, but other towns send them here? Now, I hear you guys, I know you're passionate about the things you do, but I need more passion about quality of life. You can't just say the administration and sit back there comfortably and act like you don't have a job to do too and advocate. Not saying that none of you do advocate, but we need nine council members working in one direction. We need the administration administration to work with this council. But you know, I've noticed in the last two years or maybe three years, ever since the Joey Torres vote of no confidence, which I orchestrated, was done because the man was about to go to jail. You don't call for a vote of no confidence just to call for it. Because now it's becoming political. Right now, we need y'all to work for our best interests and not your interests. This is what's happening every day. I, listen, and I want to thank you, Marissa Davila, for our conversation we had the last time at, at the event. Because we need, even when I'm fighting with you, I have to work with you. I have to work with you. When I fight with anyone up here, I still have to work with you. And you have no choice but to work with us. We need a clean street. We need a safe street. And I'm telling you, the people of Patterson, y'all, you don't realize it. There's people that are coming back in this next election. And in the following elections, people that are coming back because we're tired. We're tired of being insulted, believing we're stupid. We don't know what's going on. Walk the streets of Patterson right now. City Hall, go on the corner. You might catch them shooting drugs. Go by the police headquarters. They got their bags and their the mattresses and their covers outside. And you're telling me that the city, collectively, the two bodies are doing the job they're supposed to do? You're not. This has been the, the comments meeting I've been to in three years. I congratulate you. I don't know what you're going to do after I leave. But I'm telling you, I'm holding you to this. You just did a few minutes. You just had a vote on uh, uh, loading zones. Well, damn it. When the hell are you going to give us some parking? See, listen. No one can park in this city. And you're giving me more loading zones and more handicapped parking. Where does the normal person who goes to work every day, gets off, come home after working hard, and wants to park their car that's going to five or six blocks down the street? Last but not least, I don't hear nothing from any of you. If you're not, if you're not advocating 100%, 200% for affordable housing. And if I catch you not doing it, buddy, you know what, you know what I do. I'm coming after you. You can't tell me. You're supporting the community, you're working for the community, and people can't afford to live in the this, in this city. In the ghetto, the ghetto, $2,000 a month for a street that looks like it should be blown up. We don't need cops now. We do need some armed forces in this town. It's not safe, and your job is not just to legislate, it's to advocate for the citizens of Patterson. Thank you for the additional time you gave me, which I always steal two minutes, but I just wanted to say thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rogan. Next speaker, please. Yes, Mr. President. Next speaker is Mr. Carr. Can you say that? Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it is. Um, good evening, good evening, um, council good. members, Mr. President. Good evening. Um, I just want to just say um, happy birthday to former Councilwoman Vera Hames. Um, I hope uh, she enjoyed her day and she mm -hmm. will have many, many more wonderful birthdays in her years ahead. Mr. President, the last time I was he, um, at this podium, I did mention um, something with regards to the budget that was being discussed. Um, I don't know how serious 
both the administration and the council um, takes comments that's made here. And I believe I made a comment about not needing more bodies in the police force, but we should use that money and develop technology that would aid the system more than it is being done um, presently. We're talking about maybe adding another 30 police officers. That's a lot of money. If we don't change the system, that is only adding more bodies and nothing is going to um, be resolved in the long run. So I, I just want to put that back on the burner for, for consideration that we start thinking how best we can develop that side of the, the, the matter to solve our issues here in Patterson. I also want to thank the council for voting for that flat rate for the sewage. Um, you know, my sewage bill went up something like 200%. You know, I, I'm not using anything ad additional, and I got zapped that way. So I hope this will take care of um, our issue. I'm primarily here this evening to, um, to thank the council for working through the resolution designating Vreeland Avenue um, seven, between 17th and 19th Avenue, Jamaica Way. Jamaicans have been here in this city for a very long time. And uh, we, have, we have contributed mightily. I would venture to say there are people of Jamaican heritage that have served this council, that served the city, that we don't even know that they are Jamaicans, that they have Jamaican roots. I need not go through that. All I'm here to say this evening, I was disappointed when I heard a young man came to this microphone and exhorted the council to vote it down. That young man obviously have no sense of the history of the Jamaican contribution in this city. So I ask you this evening, as you come up on Resolution 28, I'm appealing to every council member here. I'm asking you for your support. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kerr. <clears throat> Next speaker, please. Yes, Mr. President. Next speaker, Mr. Elvis Durham. Elvis. Mr. Elvis Dorm, 283 Broadway, Patterson, 44. <clears throat> I came here to um, talk about, I'm going to take my time, the downtown area. I want to talk to the administration. I'm not going to scream, I'm just going to talk professional. For five months now, I was talking about the downtown area. We need policing in the downtown area. Before, the last time I was here, a week after, it was a gun shooting downtown. A gun shooting. But I told y'all, we need walking policing in the downtown area. We got drug addicts in the downtown area, all over the place. I work for the Patterson Parking Authority. I'm the senior maintenance, been there for 17 years. I was cleaning by motor vehicle. These drug addicts came to me. You not moving my stuff. I know where you be at. You be on Broadway in summer. I said, okay. If you wanna, if you wanna do something, you doing that. I don't have to go through all that if I'm, if I'm on the clock working. You see, I'm asking you, I'm asking y'all right now, do something right now. Because these drug addicts is running customers away from the downtown area. They get back in their car and they go to Wayne. They go to Woodbrook Mall. You see, I don't work for the city. I work for parking authority. And how we get paid? Money's got to go in the media. People got to park. I need a raise. Y'all do something. 
Okay? It's your job. No, no, it's no joke. It's your responsibility to protect the customers, to protect the workers. It's, it's state law. It's supposed to have policing in the downtown area. Okay? And I'm asking for policing. I'm not, I ain't going to be asking no more. I'm demanding. Next time, I'm bringing them. I'll contact the China 4 News. If you can't do your job, hey, mister, excuse me with the glasses. I'm talking. That's, I know you're a rookie, but I'm asking. If I respect you, you respect me. I'm asking for policing in the downtown area. OK? Mayor Andre Sayer, I know you hear this. And another thing I want to say, Miss Ames, happy birthday. I, was, I, I am invited to her party. But that day, um, I got some personal things to do. But Miss Ames, I love you. You are the queen of Patterson. You gave people jobs, a lot of people jobs. You see y'all young city councils? Look out for y'all community like Miss Ames did. Miss Ames made sure that it was policing on the fourth war. Not only the fourth war, but, but she fought for the city of Patterson. Okay? So, administration, you hear me, right? And how you doing? Um, don't know your name, but I'm going to tell you, I'm, I'm Elvis. I'm a community activist. I'm a promoter for this city. I respect you, and you respect me. So the next time I come up here, please look at me. God bless you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Yes, Mr. President. Next speaker, Mr. Don Keith Watson. Good night, Council. Um, I'm here tonight, and I'm just at the climax of getting everyone in the public to know about the past evil that is done to me by a former council person. And I'm just admonishing council that we should never allow this thing to happen to anybody in the city of Patterson again. If you see a council person is attempting to even try to push back on a street naming or anything that is beneficial to a group, people, you sit that council person aside and say, no, we are for the people. Not one council person here should actually hold any other council by the neck and say, this is how it's going to go. I mean, three years ago, when Errol Kerr came and pushed forward this proposal to name, rename the street, you know, when I was here, I mean, three weeks ago, and, and it, it hurts me to know that every one of the councils share the same sentiment, that we know where the pushback was coming from. And I don't blame the council person, president at that time. You know what? I give her credit to know that she said, because you are a Jamaican, I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you the glory. So you, you push this thing. And it was dead. I'm telling all my council person right now and the administration that I'm hurt. I'm hurt because it shouldn't take us this long to be asking the council to vote on the street name. Never in the city, the history of the city of Patterson. It is ever happened. And the mayor know also because three years ago I was in his office and he was excited about the movement. He was very excited about the movement. And all of a sudden, it just. And every, almost every day, I'm on the phone with Errol Kerr, and I'm also on the phone with council member, trying to find out what's going on, what's happening. And the council president now is sheer openly and privately that the pushback was coming from a former council person. And I'm asking the council to please 
profoundly introspect within yourself and empathize with my hurt, our hurt, and vote for this street name. Thank you. Thank you. Council President. No? Councilman, please. We, we're gonna, we're gonna, as we vote, we're gonna address okay. the, no, please. No, no problem. And let me make my list. Mr. President, if time there's no more speak on the public portion, may I entertain a motion to close? So move. Second. second. Moved by Councilwoman Davila, second by Councilman Mendez and Velez and Mims. Roll call to close, uh, Madam Clerk. Yes, Mr. President. Roll call to close the public portion of the regular meeting of June 10, 2021. Councilwoman Khan. Yes. Councilman Davila. So before I close, it is uh, not in the norm that we have uh, speakers come before us and address us specifically by name. You can mention specifics without pointing at each individual. So my apologies for those who think that when being addressed, it is being disrespectful, because truly sometimes um, it can be misunderstanding. I thought that I was not going to speak again on, in regards to the naming of Jamaica Way because we have had this discussion various times. But when we have individuals come before us and speak to the public and say things that are not true, it really moves me to begin the conversation again. So to the community out there, please, everything that you hear is not necessarily what occurred. It was not three years, it was two years ago. There was no councilman not wanting to do it. I'm not going to say that. And the current council president never said that it was a council person who was against it. So please, community, we are not against the street naming of Jamaica Way. The concerns were that we are the body that determine and vote on it. So there were various council members, Councilwoman Cotton, Councilman at the time McCoy, myself, there was discussions. So please do not believe what is being told here today. One of the questions was, was 10th <laughs> Avenue, that area, appropriate to name it? Such a, a great community that arrived years ago, a community that I grew up with on East 32nd and Park Ave, right by Gilmore Realty. Yes, I said it, Gilmore Realty. I'm saying that's an inside joke because I have some of my colleagues who, they have a tendency uh, to say that, um, I mentioned Gilmore Realty a lot, but it's the truth, that is where I, I grew up. I'm not in a negative way that I grew up in that area. This is, that is where I, that was my stomping ground till I went away to college. So before I vote council president, I just wanted to really just put it, I, I really do not appreciate for anyone to come and misinform the community. And as the council president at that time, I take offense to that because it makes it seem that I was in cahoots to make sure that it didn't happen. So, you know, with that said, I'm looking forward to that vote. Uh, to the young lady, I invite you to come to my office. I'll give you my personal number, 973-641-2286, and we could definitely have a sit down and have conversations um, so we can better understand each other. Uh, so with that said, uh, Madam Clerk, Council President, my vote is yes to Thank close. you. Thank you, Councilman. Councilman Jackson. So, uh, a week or so ago, Councilman Khalid touted his record in never uh, passing. He's not a quarterback. He never passes. I respect that. I totally respect that because he's definitely one of the hardest hitting, straightforward council members on this, on this, on, in this dais. But one thing I can do is I can tout myself on, I, I challenge anyone to question any single vote that I've ever made, or any action that I've given, or any piece of information that I've given to any constituent or said on this floor. I'm always 100% honest, and, I, and I, I definitely will confer with, with Councilwoman Davila. She was definitely not a part 
of holding up uh, the vote, but it was a former council person that was holding up the vote. There was a former council person that was holding the item from going to the to committee. So I commend Mr. Errol Carr on his consistency because he brought the application forward several years ago. Mm -hmm. The application was lost. As many other applications come forward, they all things seem to have moved, moved forward. There was a former council person that tried, that, that didn't try, but intentionally held the item up. That's just the reality of it. And I'm gonna also go further, you know, when we talk about um, scenarios which people make comments about or take credit for certain things, I would never do that. In fact, let me give you a quick example. I was told by a former council person, hey, when are you gonna do a flyer for what you did on Hilden Ave? I was puzzled, like, well, what did I do on Hilden Ave? I thought maybe it was referring to a project that I was working on. Well, you know, they, the Heldon Ave just got repaved and new sidewalks, new streetscapes. I said, I didn't have anything to do with that. <laughs> you need to learn how to take credit for things that go on. And see, that's the problem. People take credit for things that they have nothing to do with and or they don't take credit for the things they do have something to do with. Whatever happens in the backdoor meetings, you all know I will be the one to come out and expose it because that's the transparency that we're looking for. Now, to say this in closing, you're totally right, Ms. Tatiana. It, first of all, it's impossible for us to answer to all the, the, the community's questions and requests in three minutes. So we get, I'm, I'm sorry, we get two minutes to, to, to rebut. So we have to sit here, take notes, but this is not the practice of the council. That's incorrect. That's another fallacy. That's incorrect information. The way the council moves at the moment is dictated by the council president. The council president sets proceedings. He chooses how the meeting is ran. In the past, the public would get the courtesy to be able to have an answer from the, the administration and or a council person and or any questions that they had. You can go back and watch count, countless council meetings. It's there, it's the reality. The meeting is ran according to how the council president chooses to run it. There is a certain thing called common practices or practices of the council, which the new council president comes in and determines it. I recall days when Mr. Rucker was given a concession and given five minutes. The council president has that discretion. Lastly, as he's trying to interrupt me now, I'm asking you to wrap it up, just like everyone else. We I'm have not two wrapping minutes. it up. I'm going to finish there what you I'm go. saying. We challenge. Continue. Because this Council. is very important. This is important. This is important information that people try to keep whenever I'm speaking factual truth. Unbelievable. Name a time you've watched a council meeting since this council president has been sitting, since this administration has been here, where the BA has answered any questions. When the former BA was here, she would go in detail, in depth, and if there was further discussion needed, she'd pull you aside. But questions to the community was answered. There's countless questions that's asked at that microphone, and they never get answered. Now, it's the council's responsibility to make sure that the service provider, the chefs, preparing your food, Council, prepare it correctly. Please, please wrap it up. It is the council's responsibility to make sure your concerns Councilman. are answered by the administration. Councilman, please so wrap it up. So when it doesn't get answered from this podium, it is because Co Councilman, please wrap the it up. effort of the council president. Councilman. Quite clear. Thank you for Madam giving me credit. Uh, thank you. Yes, Mr. Pre Mr. Uh, Councilman Jackson. Velez? No, 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 no. Jackson, he said Jackson. I didn't say Councilman Velez, I said Councilman Jackson. What's your vote, Councilman? Your vote, sir. And further, <laughs> Councilman, just to Councilman, just to please, be emphasized, you, just to emphasize, Councilman, Councilman, just to emphasize, Councilman, just to emphasize, Councilman, you're making this. Just you're to the, you're being the driving force making this council look bad. Just to emphasize the fact that please. I'm willing and capable of working with whomever. Unbelievable. 
Everyone knows the issue that Councilman Velez and I have had together. He gave me a ride from the ballpark earlier. Councilman, so I'm com please. totally willing and <laughs> willing to work with we whoever. Have, Councilman, but we, I will be the person to expose the factual truth because that's what's needed in this community. We have, a pe we have people who are hiding behind certain practices, and it's unfortunate. Yeah. Thank Madam you. Clerk, my vote is no. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, no, I mean, public my voice no. Thank you, thank you. The public question? Correct. Thank you. Councilman Kelly. It's Kali. symbolic, yeah. Yeah. but you already know this is how it goes. I voted yes, Madam Thank President. you. Councilman Mendez. Oh, oh Lord. <laughs> <laughs> the, what a special <laughs> night. But l let, me just, let me just take my quick two minutes to um, just, uh, you know, Tatiana, I really, uh, you know, I want to thank you for just keep getting involved. We need more people in the community to get involved. The power is in the people. It's not on this side. You elect us, and you could take us out of, out of office. You elect the mayor, you could take the mayor out of office. So we need more people to get involved and fight for more safety in our community, you know, and, and to bring back what Patterson was before, not what it is now. Um, it also, uh, I, I think that uh, Commissioner Kerr, I really want to thank uh, 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 Mr. Key Waxon because he was the one that invited me to your house. We have a discussion. Uh, there was an argument in the past, but you make me understand what was, what was the problem with the Jamaican way with this tree naming. And, and along with Councilman Jackson, it is a really, it's a true honor for me as a councilman of the third war to be the sponsor of this legislation, three years, way long overdue. And it is, it is a blessing for me to be able to support this legislation and move forward. And this is not only the, the, the renaming of or a portion of Breland Avenue uh, as a Jamaican way, I, I have hope and I do believe uh, uh, that we're going to bring all those Jamaican business owners, homeowners that have been here for decades. And I'm just going to say this, and, and I know the Jamaican community in my work, but now in the, in the past two elections, it is incredible all the professional doctor, engineer that we have that live in the city of Patterson from the Jamaican community that you don't see them, you don't see them involved in the political arena, but they're there. Uh, professional people that have been investing in this city for many, many years. So this is a, a, the best way to acknowledge the contribution of the Jamaican community into the city of Patterson, and that will definitely happen. Um, you know, and just in closing, with that being said, I, I, uh, Madam, Madam B.A., I think that the comment that you hear from um, Tatiana, I think that's something that will help the administration will be try to have a better uh, communication with, uh, with the community. I know, you, you know we get a lot of speakers that they come here looking for action, uh, answering and question, and just by doing a, maybe a sidebar with those people, that would definitely help, you know. Um, and and w what I would like to see along my colleagues is that we definitely, we could disagree. We're not, we're not gonna agree on everything, but respect is very important. We don't have to disrespect each other to disagree, and that's something that really concerns me. People, they, they respect all the Cali we know without, they just disrespect it. And for me, uh, I'm not, I definitely, you know, you could say whatever you want to say about me, but I'm responsible about my reaction to your comment. And I will pray for respect in this governing body. That's all I'm going to say. My vote is yes, Madam Clerk. Thank you, Councilman. Thank you. Councilman Mims? So quickly, Ms. Portugal, I just want to say, um, I, I want to say to you, it's, it's never, uh, my heart. When people come to the microphone, we, we acknowledge it. You come, we hear your heart. We've spoken several times on inbox. Um, I have your number. I'm not sure if you have mine, but I'll make sure you have it. We can have a sit down and have a conversation because it's, it appears to me that you're open to learn this, the process and what goes on, who do you call for what, and that, that's something that I think is important for all of our residents in the city of Patterson. We're all in the same place. We live here, too. So it's not that we sit here and we don't see it. We live it every single day. I'm born and raised in Patterson. So we have the same concerns that you have. Um, and so I'm open to that. Whenever you're ready, let me know. I'll definitely have a sit down with you. Um, the young lady, I know the chief of staff, had a talk with her, Mr. Rucker, always um, his eloquent speeches at the mi microphone. Um, to Mr. Watson, I just want to say, because I wasn't a part of any of that, so I just want to say, because, you know, when it talks about everyone, I was not a part of it at all. Me and uh, Mr. Carr, who we served together on the school board, we had a dialogue after the fact. For me, I don't have issues with anyone wanting to bring forth anything that acknowledges ethnicities or 
or for anyone. That's that's I'm I'm the person that pushes it and supports it. So I don't have issues with that. So I'm not someone that would be uh, the robot block or uh, an obstructionist to something of that nature because that is not who I am and I'll definitely be there if I'm in the country at that time for uh, the the day that we cut the ribbon and unveil the street name and so make sure everyone you know to invite me um, and to all of our residents some don't get an opportunity to come out and speak and some do um, but I, even if you can't come out to the council meetings, reach out to your council um, men, men and women of each ward. Um, let us know your concerns and we will advocate, we will fight, and we will get what is need to be done as it relates to whatever your concerns are. Madam Clerk, my vote is yes. I'm staying within my two minutes for now. Thank you. Um, Councilman Villas? I'm gonna try to take the minute from Councilman Kalik and so, I just get it. <laughs> I, I'm the happy camper. Listen, man. That's, I just try to. That's not going to be enough for you. Uh, yeah, I just try to. Uh, Miss Portugal, keep on coming. You expire. Trust me. You, the way that you speak and you cross your point and your vision, and you want to see the city, I commend you. Hopefully, a lot of people watching out there take the lead the same way you're doing it. Because we need more people like you to express the concern of the community and we start listening. So I commend you. Second, and uh, you know, uh, I was gonna say something to Mr. Rockers, but I could tell him in my office, no problem. Um, she's gonna beat you in speeches, you know that, right? Okay, good. But um, it, it, I'm gonna say the same way that my colleague, Councilwoman at large, Marissa Davila stated. We thought that we're not going to go back and forth with the Jamaican way situation. And Mr. Urquhart is moving, shaking his head. It's not our fault that his vision of Jamaican hero was not his way. And it's not Mr. Watson. And I mentioned name because every time, and, and, and let me say it this way. I don't like people taking heritage or celebration of heritage of country and turn it political. Let's respect the Jamaican community. We all got to celebrate Jamaica way. Mr. Watson, probably not your way, or Mr. Urquhart, your way is going to be the community way the Jamaican community way. And please, if you have something bad to say about any individual that was sitting here or are sitting out there, go up to them and talk to them in private or whatever, and if you have something to say to them and whatever you have to say, don't say it. Sometimes they don't even know what you're trying to say. So, and look for peace, my brother Watson. Let's celebrate Jamaica way the right way, the sacrifice of the Jamaican community in their country, and also the sacrifice and contribution they do in the city of Patterson. Let's celebrate. Hopefully this is the end when we put the sign. We don't have to go back and forth saying who fault was it, or who didn't block it, or who blocked it. Let's be common sense on this. And, and I don't want council president using his uh, his power, uh, like he always used, but I have a lot of Jamaican between East 21st Street and 31st Street and between 20th Avenue and Ellison Street. Oh my God. Yo, my man. Oh, love. Madam Clerk, my vote is yes. Thank you, Councilman Velez. Mr. President. So, um, to Tatiana, um, my words got misconstrued when I said, you know, people don't care who is responsible. What I meant is people want to see their services being provided. They don't want an excuse. They don't want us to say, uh, I don't think it's, it's, you know, I don't want, they don't want us to give them an excuse and say, it's the mayor. You know, you're, we were always also elected. So that's why we often have that fight. And the fight we put up often with the administration is on behalf of the people that voted for us. The same way you feel passionate, and like Ernie mentioned when he came from another town to this one, 
we pay the same amount of taxes as the other people in other towns, and that's why we have this disagreement, and sometimes you know, we say, look, we provided the resources you asked to provide the services, what's going on, and, and this is the why we have this, this situation. Now, it is, you know, Ernie mentioned, oh, we need nine council, we never had nine council members working together. You know, whoever say that and is wishing for that, well wishes, but at least you need five to work together. And I believe although this council have not held the decorum as other council bodies, um, I don't think any of us could just be blamed directly because I can't control grown-ups. I can't. Personally, I can't. Also, you hear, <laughs> you hear council members, you, you saw what took place here. here. I can't, I, you know, I can't control that what my council colleagues do. It's just sad that some council members just talk, but they cannot get anything done. You know how you measure if a councilman is, is effective? It's not in what they say, but it's in the support that they could get from the council members. So you have council members here that cannot get support in the three years that I've been here for one initiative. They talk a good game, yes, but they cannot get support for one initiative. There is, you know, I appreciate the council members that, you know, that voted for me to, to be here as your president. There is others that are never going to have that support to become president of the council. And it's not about the title. It's about moving the city forward. But this is the situation we have here. We waste so much time making up stories and so on, but those council members cannot get anything accomplished. Now, on the other hand, when I put my mind to something, I get it done. I often say, Flavio, you flip flop all the time. No, look at one time, look at one time that we were fighting, uh, let me not use the word fighting, in disagreement with the administration about the sewer rate that they implemented. Before it was implemented, I was arguing with them for three to four months, but then we had a presentation, they convinced us, in the best interest of the city, I wish them well, you know. But then there was the Passaic Valley Sewer Commission, I mean, Water Commission, you know, billing people the wrong water amounts, and so on, right? A lot of mistakes were going on. Then, now I wanted a presentation, right? A presentation, I mean, an analysis to be done on a revised sewer rate, right? We were getting pushback for a while. Now, Flavio decided to do it myself. I decided, you know what, council members? Let's dissolve the parking authority. I didn't want to dissolve the parking authority. I wanted to get them to do the analysis. Guess what? Water. I got them to do the analysis, right? That's how you get things done as a council member. You gotta think of ways to get things done. Not just talk, 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 and things remain the same. You gotta get things done. And that's what I'm here for. You elected me to get things done, not to play politics. Sometimes I don't say the things, the smart things that a politician would say because you might lose some votes. Um, last, last thing. I think it was Earl Corey that mentioned that we have too many police officers. We gotta analyze our entire staff. I'll give you an example. The, one of the hardest work of bodies we have here is the fire department, right? But we need to analyze, and I'm Point not of saying, order, Council President. And I'm not saying. Point of order. Okay, just I gave you all the courtesy, and some of you took you it anyway not to give extend. The courtesy, but point of order. You extended, point so order. I'm going to wrap it up, just like you wrapped you should, it up. You should answer to the point of order. It's the process. So I'm going to ask Madam Clerk that we make an investment here. We have a button for people, you know, for the president, whoever's the president is next, that's able to turn off the mic on the other council members. Because this is ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Point In 12 order. years watching of, council members, order, I never saw this. So I just have a, a question. Okay. Does the clock, does the clock just apply like, to you as well? Yes. It so are you above he, the clock? He applies. It's my, dis my discretion. I'm running the meeting. Everybody else exceeded Again, their time. It's his discretion. That's why you're never going to become president. My vote is yes, Madam Clerk. I'll finish my statement later. Mr. Kerr, he didn't let me answer to you. He Thank took you, five Mr. minutes, I couldn't, uh, you know, continue. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. The vote is seven in favor, one against, one absent. The public portion of the regular meeting of June 10, 2021 is hereby closed. Mr. President, which other item would you like to entertain at this time? Number 28. Still number 28, Madam Clerk. Thank you, CP. What number, Mr. President? 28. 28. Next item is item number 28. Item number 28 read resolution designating Vreeland Avenue between 17th Avenue and 19th Avenue to be also known as Jamaica Way. 
sponsored by Councilman Michael Jackson and Councilman Alex Mendez, City Council Resolution 21305. Move it. So move. Second. Second. Jackson. Moved by Councilman Mendez, second by Councilwoman Davila. No. 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 Moved by, by Councilman Mendez and Jackson. Jackson. By myself. That's, that's fine. It's fine. None. I, had, I didn't hear that's council fine. members. It's no problem. It's I heard, fine. I, I so heard Councilman Mendez said moved. Yeah. Councilmember moved it and then Councilman Jackson. And second, and second by, by me and Davila. Okay, second by Davila, second by me. Who else? Ma'am. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Yes, Mr. President. Roll call in item number 28 for approval. Councilwoman Tom. Thank you, Madam Clerk. I just want to say that, um, as Councilwoman Davila said, it, it had not been three years. Mm -hmm. But um, I could just say for a fact for myself, um, when it was brought up, I was not included in the conversation from the beginning of it. I came into the conversation later on in it. And, and, and all of us here, um, um, love Jamaica, love going there, love the people. There's nothing that we want to stop. I don't think that, um, to make people think that we did not want to do something is just not right. It's just not fair that um, if they thought maybe we thought that, but it was not that way. I believe that it was the name that, that, it was the name that needed to be changed. Because I remember fighting with some other items, um, but another culture uh, that they wanted to name something after someone who they said had slaughtered uh, Haitians. And they wanted to name something after that person who slaughtered, who killed Haitians, um, trying to come over into the country. Um, so with that being said, it's an honor that we finally got this done. You know what, I always say that um, no matter sometimes how mean people may be or how, how you think, but I've learned to be humble, uh, and I think, and I learned not to be a, a cutter, a razor cutter, because it, it's a hurtful feeling when, when, when someone talks about someone and they really don't really know the whole truth about everything or what's happening and what's going on. Um, and, and, and you find that when you have in your heart that you know you want to do right, God gives you the strength to, to overcome what you always hear in your ear, what you always hear. And sometimes it's not good stuff, but God gives you the strength to overcome stuff. And it's, I'm honored, I'm, it's a pleasure. There's so many items that I've voted on since I've been here that I'm honored to be, my name could be on something. Um, Cause I don't know how much longer I'm gonna be here. And so it's gonna be seen that, you know, Councilwoman Cotton voted on this. And that's what I look at of the honor of being able to say I voted on this item. So with that being said, Madam Clerk, congratulations to Earl and Kevin. Um, that being said, uh, Madam Clerk, my vote is yes. Thank, thank you, Councilman. Councilman Davila? I think I said uh, when we were closing the public portion, I, I spoke, um, we finally are taking action. Um, as well as Councilwoman Cotton, it gives me great pleasure to be able to support this measure um, year after year for quite a few years, you know, celebrating the flag raising uh, of the Jamaican independence. Um, and just, you know, in what I do on a daily basis and what I've been doing for the past 29 years is um, working in higher education. Uh, designated school official for international students, bringing students from Jamaica. I don't think you know that, uh, Commissioner. But I will say this, I've served at all capacities. We are a, what I consider a one community. We all live in Patterson. And we, the best thing that we have is that we are diverse. Our diversity is, is, is uh, um, what makes Patterson so special. And in my eyes, number one. Do I want a better, cleaner, safer? Absolutely. But I do respect, and right now this is about Jamaica Way and this is about supporting this measure. And today, the Jamaican community, because I'm almost sure that every council member here will take a, a firm, positive action on this. And so today, we are all Jamaican. So with that said, Madam Clerk, this one's for you. My vote is yes. Thank you. Councilman Jackson. Thank you, Madam Clerk. 
So one of the things that we have to acknowledge is the, the extreme uh, beautiful diversity of our community. And um, it, it would be shameful not to acknowledge the, the uh, contributions by all various um, um, groups and, and cultures and so on and so forth. You know, but what stands out to me is that for many, many years, we spend time driving on streets that are named after slave owners. And this is all over our country, all over the country. We, 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 we drive on streets that are named after people that have done some of the most atrocious things to, to p those of us who have came here and some of us who are brought here, but those of us who have consistently made contributions. So I believe that every community deserves the right to have a piece of the community that symbol, symbol, sim, symbolizes their, their, their presence and their contribution. So I'm happy that Mr. Carr, that you have carried the torch and you've, you've fought the long fight on behalf of not just yourself, not just your group of people, but for all groups of people that have the same equal inalienable right to have a piece of the community that resembles them. So with that being said, hat goes off to you, sir. I'm happy to support this item. I'm happy to support it to the extent that, I, that we had to. And uh, with that being said, my vote is yes. Thank you, Councilman. Councilman Khalid? My vote is yes, Madam Clerk. Councilman Mendez? Thank you, Madam Clerk. And um, as I mentioned before, uh, this is a very special vote for me because as a councilman of the third war, where we have the largest Jamaican population in the city of Patterson, and I believe it maybe in the state of New Jersey, it's been, it's been amazing to uh, get connected with our Jamaican brothers and sisters for, for, for many years, but uh, visiting different area, you will not realize how many professors, how many teachers, doctor, engineer we have in the city of Patterson from the Jamaican community. Uh, recently, uh, Mr. Key Watson daughter was promoted to sheriff department uh, as a, as a, a higher uh, level uh, in the department, so congratulations to your daughter. So and many other examples of Jamaican that are doing excellent in this community. And, uh, and if we go into the business area, we have so many uh, business owners that have, been, that have been here for years and years supporting this community, investing in Patterson, in real estate, and in all the different areas. So um, we're definitely going to acknowledge the contribution of the Jamaican community, and I hope that we could get some jerk chicken for that celebration, Mr. Kerr. Congratulations. You've been fighting for the longest for this, along with Key Waxon and the organization, and John Jay organization. I know you guys are going to put a great event. I'm just going to be there to enjoy the delicious food uh, that you guys are going to have on that day and, and, and to hug my brothers and sisters from the Jamaican community. And that's what we are, Patterson. We are a melting pot, uh, a, the, a city with, with the biggest diversity in the state of New Jersey, and we have to embrace all the diversity. And this is the time for our brothers and sisters of the Jamaican community. Madam Clerk, my vote is yes. Thank you. Councilman Belev? Councilman Velez, it's your turn to vote. She's sitting as a, sitting in as the president. Oh, Council but President, she, I'm sorry. Due to COVID I, I, restrictions, I didn't know this Council not, President was gone. She stays in her chair. She does not go right. to the president. So, thank you, thank you, Madam Clerk. You're uh, welcome, sir. You know, reading that this resolution, that's the native Virland Avenue between 17th Avenue and 19th Avenue, to be known as Jamaica Way. There's two, whereas that caught my attention. The people of the city of Patterson recognize the economic, the cultural, and social contribution of Jamaican American in our city, state, and our nation. The city, the people of Patterson. That means 150 plus residents that we have in the city of Patterson recognize the Jamaican community. And the third that brought me my attention was the where, as they say, Jamaica Way will serve as a symbol of recognition and honor to all those who immigrate, follow their dreams, gave their life for this country, paved the road 
for others and left a lasting footprint within the city of Patterson. And that brings me to remember that the first Jamaican American elected to the Board of Education in the city of Patterson was Bill McCoy. The second was Earl Carr. That is paving the road. And if you go to It's Orange, and if you go to other places in the state of New Jersey, you're going to see individuals that are in place in the political field because others have paved the road. So I salute you. Those that have paved the road that are public and those that are anonymous individuals in this city, in the state, that have proudly say, I'm a Jamaican America, and now a street is going to be named Jamaica Way. So let's celebrate and let's represent what Jamaica means in the city of Patterson, in the state of New Jersey, and every time we see a name, name after a community or a country, let's represent it the proper way and be proud of your heritage and your contribution to the city of Patterson. So saying that, I'm proud that the Puerto Rican community is part of Jamaica because the Tainos was their Tainos too. So que viva Puerto Rico slash Jamaica. <laughs> My vote is yes. Thank you. Madam President. Congratulations to the Jamaican community. My vote is yes, Madam Clerk. Thank you. The vote is seven in favor, two absent. Item number 28 is hereby adopted. Thank you. Item, num item number 29, Madam Clerk. 29? Item number 29. Yes, next item is item number 29. Resolution memorializing the life and legacy of Mark Damien Smith, sponsored by Councilwoman Dr. Lelisa Mims and co-sponsored by Councilwoman Ruby N. Cotton. Resolution 21306. Second. So moved. Second. Moved by Councilman Mims, second by Councilman Velez, Davila, and Mendez. Roll call, well, no, Wait a second. And Moved by Councilman Mims and Cotton. Mo and I say okay. second. No, no, she had to include me. That's all I said. Oh, OK. Oh. Mo moved by Councilman Mims and Cotton. Okay. Second by Councilman um, Velez, Davila, and Mendez. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Yes, Ms. Madam President. Roll call in item number 29 for approval, Councilwoman Cotton. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Um, I'd just like to say about Mark Damon Smith, he worked with the Youth Bill probably for over 20 years. Um, I can remember when I first got elected how he um, came to me and, and, and was, wanted to do work for residents in the war in the, in the city. Uh, it was a program under uh, uh, NJCDC and they did a lot of work in the community, uh, helping people with uh, things they needed to get done in their homes. And uh, so, you know, it was really suddenly that he passed away. But we just wanted to, I just wanted to recognize him. And I know all the hard work and all the young people that came through his program that are so, so, so very successful now because of a gentleman like Mark Damon Smith. And you know, when you have good people around you, it makes you be a good person. So he is truly, truly going to be missed. But it was an honor to co-sponsor this with my councilwoman, uh, recognizing the work that Mark Damon Smith did with Youth Bill. He started Youth Bill, and he's been around with it for over 20 years. So with that being said, Madam Clerk, uh, my vote is yes. Thank you. Councilwoman Davila. Before I take action, um, Madam BA, I know that I addressed you. Uh, the constituents are actually watching, I just got a text that we're watching to make sure that I've addressed the situation with the loud noise and the crowds. Uh, can you please address that? Um, it's, it's been definitely, it's gonna be a long summer. Um, I wanna thank uh, Councilwoman Mims and Councilwoman Cotton to, for bringing this forth. Uh, I am in agreement that he, uh, that it, 
we should memorialize his life and legacy. And um, I am happy to be able to support this resolution. Madam Clerk, my vote is yes. Thank you. Councilman Mendez? Thank you, Madam Clerk. I'm definitely also in support of this resolution memorializing the life and legacy of Mac Damien. So with that being said, my vote is yes, Madam Clerk. Thank you. Councilman Velez? You know, uh, this is what we talk about, people paving the road. You know, not just paving the road, it's just also leaving a legacy that others could live on it and take an, accept, an example on it. So um, my heart goes to the family and, um, you know, attracts me a lot to whereas that she, that he's, he was a father leader of troop number 95385 of Girl Scouts of Patterson for over six years. That means a lot. So that's a legacy that a lot of people should take and live with it and try to apply it for the future generation. My vote is yes. Okay, Madam President. And so um, this is really, um, it's a neat, much needed resolution, but it's hard to even say his name in the past tense. I went to school with Mark Damon Smith. We went to Patterson Catholic together, me, his sister Anissa, when he was on the football team, I was on the band, and his mom, we called her the football mom, who cheered everybody on to make sure we had snacks and food and water and so many things. And then as life progressed, Mark moved on, and I always called him the lifesaver for our youth. He did so many things for youth. I mean, it's just too tremendous to talk about the way he saved uh, our young men, young women, the way he loved his wife, the way he loved his kids, the way he um, went after those that people might have sometimes forgotten about and how he poured into them. And I was thinking about um, when he invited me to speak, and one of his phrases was, I, we, us, and how he in, in just ingrained that into all of the people he came in contact with. He's going to be missed but never forgotten. I know that Mr. Bob Garashi is watching uh, NJCDC, Youth Build. Um, he, he is it. He was it. He was the person that made it. I remember when they moved um, behind Conda Mill and I was there speaking and we found out, you know, that there was issues with traffic. It was because of Mark Damon Smith that DPW took my request and came out and there was a speed 25 light and there's a crosswalk. That is because of Mark Damon Smith and the stories go on and on about what he's done and how his imprint will never leave the city of Patterson and all the people's lives he's touched. And so with that being said, Madam Clerk, this vote is for I, this vote is for we, this vote is for us, for Mark Damon Smith. My vote is yes, Madam Clerk. Thank you, Madam President. The vote is five in favor, four absent. Item number 29 is hereby adopted. 30. Item number 30, Madam Clerk. Yes, Madam President. Next item is item number 30, resolution appointing Ms. Janelli Caraballo to the Housing Authority Board from June 1st, 2021 to June 1st, 2025. Sponsored by Councilman Lois Velez, Resolution, Council City Council, Resolution 21307. So move. Second. Moved by Councilman. Moved by Councilman Velez, second by Councilwoman Davila and Councilman Mendez. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Uh, let me ask a question first. Discussion. Discussion. Councilwoman Cotton. Can I? Um, I thought the, um, I thought it was July 1st. And I thought it should be July 1st, 2021 to July. No. It's June first. I thought it would be July first. So most of, most of the, um, 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 a board appointments. I thought it was it ends June thirtieth and starts July first. That's why I'm just questioning if it should be July first or June first. This was a delayed um, appointment, um, and that's why it's being done for June first. But. No, it's still, even if it's delayed, you still got to go back to... Um, uh, Madam Clerk, could you Madam, bring the yes. clarification? Madam, hey, go ahead. Madam President, we have given it to legal, and um, Ben had worked on this, and that was the decision that they made. If there is an error from their end, I really don't know. Who did it? Legal. Legal prepared the resolution. 
But this, this appointment has been hanging around for quite some time. Yes. Right. And the Housing Authority wanted this, this board, this um, position, and another one, the residence right. assistant, to be filled. Mm -hmm. right. So I reached out to Councilman Velez. It was his appointment. And um, based on what legal had um, explained to me, we are beginning this for June 1st, and it's a five years. No, I'm not questioning his appointment. I'm just questioning the date. That's what right. I'm questioning. To me, I've never seen June 1st on any of the dates, and that's all I'm questioning. I'll take the request and right. follow up with legal. If there's okay. any correction, then we'll follow it from there. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Okay. Roll call in item number 30 for approval, Councilwoman Cotton. Of course, Councilman Velez, this is your appointment to the Patterson Housing Authority, and my vote is yes. <laughs> Thank you. Councilman right Davila. <laughs> For the viewers, uh, every council member has either appointments in the Housing Authority or the Parking Authority. Uh, we receive resumes as a council, although a council member uh, puts a name forth, we come together and support our appointees for the most part. Uh, in this case, we're talking about a young lady who is being put forth by Councilman Velas as an appointment to the to be a commissioner of the Housing Authority? I, li I look forward to meeting you uh, personally. Um, I'm looking at your resume and I see experience. Um, I see that you're Patterson. You've gone through our school systems, and I know that you understand. Okay, the needs, I hope that you do understand the needs in our community in terms of the Housing Authority. I hope that you are firm mm -hmm. and that you are not a yes person. Mm -hmm. So with that said, Madam Clerk, Councilman Velez, I will be supporting your appointment for the Housing Authority. My vote is yes. Thank you. Councilman Mendez? Yes, Madam Clerk. Councilman Velez? You know, uh, Jamali Caraballo, you know, uh, it was not an easy pick because I presented to her and gave her time to think about it, to picture herself doing the commissioner work. After her analysis and speaking to her family, um, she decided to move forward. Then she submitted her resume, uh, well-qualified individual. She's a warrior. She understands where she came from. She understands the city of Patterson. She understands the needs of the city and the residents of Patterson, especially when it comes up to housing. And um, I don't. I think she's. I think she's going to do a great job. And I have confidence that she's going to represent not only uh, the commission that she's appointed to. She also going to represent uh, the the sentiment and the concern of all the council members and the community mm -hmm. in the city of Patterson. Mm -hmm. So that was made clear, and she uh, uh, agreed on it. So my commissioner appointed to the Housing Authority is your commissioner also, council members. So uh, you're free to talk to her and any plan and anything that is good for Patterson, please speak to her. She's good in communication. So my vote is yes and congratulations. Thank you. Uh, Madam President? So Jamali, you have been proactive. You have been truly a true advocate for Patterson. Um, I remember doing a tour at RISE and I met, um, I saw you again. You were very happy and cheerful and helpful. So I really am excited about this appointment. I, I see your heart and your passion for the city and it's an awesome opportunity Thank you, Councilman Velez, for picking someone that I think will do an amazing job and will definitely put the needs of Patterson and its residents first. My vote is yes, Madam Clerk. Thank you, Madam President. The vote is five in favor, four absent. Item number 30 is hereby adopted. Item number 31, Madam Clerk. Yes, Madam President. Next item is item number 31, resolution to celebrate anniversary of the Holy Tabernacle Church, sponsored by Councilwoman Dr. Lelisa Mims and co-sponsored by Councilman Michael Jackson. City Council Resolution 21308. Second. Moved. Moved by Councilwoman Mims, second by Councilman Velez, Councilwoman Davila, Councilman Mendez. Yes. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Yes, Madam President. Roll call at item number 31, Councilwoman Cotton. I'm sorry, Madam Clerk. Number 31. 
Uh, pa uh, let me pass for a minute. Pass, okay. Councilman Davila? My vote is yes. Thank you. Councilman um, Mendez? Yes, Madam Clerk. Uh, Councilman Velez? My vote is yes. Thank you. Um, Councilman Khan? Thank you, Madam Clerk. Um, you know, I just, I really wasn't sure, but this is in celebration of the 50th anniversary of the Tabernacle of Policy Church. 50 years, that's really something um, to, to, to be around, and I know they're gonna be around 50 more years. So, congratulations. I just wanna say that is really absolutely wonderful. Councilwoman Mims and Councilman Jackson. Madam Clerk, my vote is yes. Thank you. Madam President. To Bishop Doy, Pastor Jason Rogers. Thank you to Kamisha Rogers-Jones and the great Holy Tabernacle Church. Um, I've known you for a very long time, probably long, you've known me long as I've been living and I've known some of you as long as you've been living. This is well deserved. My vote is yes, Madam Clerk. Thank you. The vote is five in favor, four absent. Item number 31 is hereby adopted. Item number, item number 23, Madam Clerk. Yes, ma'am. Next item is item number 23, resolution reappointing the Honorable Abdel Magedi, John Abdel Hadi, JMC, to the Municipal Court of the City of Patterson, Administration, Resolution 21-300. So, so moved. So moved. Moved by Councilman Velez and Councilman Mim, second by Councilwoman Zavala and Councilman Mendez. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Yes, Madam President. Roll call, item number 23 for approval. Councilwoman Khan. 23. We're on item 23, Council President. You know, um, I, my question is, I thought that all the judges were appointed at the same time. Madam BA or Corporation I Council. believe this one was pulled. Wasn't this one pulled? No. Did no. You, I thought we did. No. It's, it's, it's a new, the reason why this is here, all the judges are appointed together, but there's, there's some, there, the, the Superior Court needed to have this on record, so that's why it's being presented to the council for us to put it um, for Superior Court. Okay. There you go. Thank you, Councilwoman. Thank you. Could we proceed with the motion that was on the floor? Yeah, we already Yeah. Did. We're in roll call. I know, but we're in roll call. We don't discuss. Um. Well, I was discussing roll call, but we didn't discuss it. I'm first in roll call. I'm first in roll call. I was just asking a question before. No, no, no we just started. Like she called a discussion Council, before roll call. No. Leave, leave it like that. Okay. Councilwoman right. Mims, can you clarify? Because I just I'll came bring back. clarity. We're, when you're in roll call, you're not supposed to have an additional discussion. Yeah, but I, before Thank I you. But she did ask the question. That's right. I but asked we're, the question. we're in roll call, though. And since I am number one, I'm in the beginning. Uh, and so she clarified it. That's what I needed to know, because I thought that we all voted for everybody all at the same time. But this had to be differently. Madam Clerk, my vote is yes. Thank you. Councilman Davila. There's a lot that I can say about the Honorable Abdel Hadi. Um, he's Patterson and I'm happy uh, to be able to support this reappointment. My vote is yes. Thank you. Did you say yes, Councilman? You said yes. yes. Okay, yes. thank you. Councilman yes. Jackson? Thank you, Madam Clerk. I know that Councilman Davila is holding back because um, he deserves so much more. Yes. She didn't want to get yelled at about the two minutes, I'm sure. But um, he's more than Patterson. He's, um, he's integrity. He's uh, courageous. He's um, committed. He's responsible. He's fair. Um, and he, he's, uh, he's all the things that, that Patterson needs. And when you talk about integrity and um, holding firm to uh, represent those members of our community with a, with a high level of integrity. I appreciate that, I respect that, and I'm willing to support anyone and all people who are willing to maintain that level of a commitment. 
Uh, Madam Clerk, my vote is yes. Thank you, Councilman. Councilman Kalik. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Councilman Jackson, you forgot he's a Kennedy Knights too. Okay. Congratulations, uh, Judge Abdul Hadi. My vote is yes. Thank you, Councilman Mendez. Thank you, Madam Clerk. It's definitely a great honor for me to vote in support of Judge Abdullah Harry as the Chief Judge. He's definitely his partisan, you know, and you're right, Councilman Kalik went to Kennedy High School. Uh, he's a very accessible person, very professional, um, and his work ethic, it's incredible. Um, so it definitely, it's a great honor for me to say yes to resolution number 23. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Thank you. Councilman Mims? So I remember back when I was a commissioner on the school board and I would see this guy sitting in the uh, audience, always poised, very alert, very attentive. And then one day we were in the parking lot and we had a really, really great conversation. And I learned not just about him, but his entire family in a matter of five minutes. And from that day, I knew what he stood for. He's a great guy. He stands for morals and values and integrity. And I really respect him because even at that time, I saw his fight and advocacy for Patterson and for its residents. And so, Chief, I appreciate you. Thank you for all that you do. You have my support. And I will definitely and gra gra graciously say yes. Yes, Madam Clerk. Thank you. Councilman Velez. Honorable Abdul Mahir John Abdul Hidi. See, I'm trying to pronounce it right, Your Honor, just in case. <laughs> uh, I had to commend the Honorable Judge Abdul Hadi uh, because in the crisis and the pandemic that we went through um, in the city of Patterson, that court never stopped. And um, he did the possible to protect his employees. Uh, to protect the city and also to protect those that had to come in front of him. Um, as a chairman of the statutory agency of our city, he brought in a lot of ideas regarding the visual court system, um, the uh, how to uh, do everything online, and to catch up with the new technology regarding uh, the new method that the pandemic COVID-19 put us through. So congratulations. Uh, he's a team player, and I know that the, uh, the judicial system and the court of the city of Patterson is proud of our judge uh, like he is. A well-qualified individual. Hopefully he stay for us with us longer than three years, and um, anybody that comes understand that he's a Patterson, and, um, and he loves Patterson as it is. So saying that, Your Honor, congratulations. My vote is yes. Thank you, Councilman. Mr. President. Um, my vote is yes. Thank you. The vote is eight in favor, one absent. Item number 23 is hereby adopted. Madam Clerk, can we do 33 and 34? I know I'm jumping around, but it's just 33 and 34. Yep. Sure, that's fine. Next item is item number 33. And item number 33 reads, resolution authorizing the award of contract to first priority emergency vehicles for the purchase, installation, and delivery of one 2020 and two 2019 type one Ford F450 ambulances for the fire department under the Houston Galveston area council contract number am 10-20 fire resolution 21310 so move second second moved by councilman velez second by councilman mendez uh, roll call madam clerk i think it's second by councilman mendez and cotton correct i think i heard councilman cotton mr president what did you say council i didn't hear you excuse me i thought you said i think i heard councilman cotton said you did second. hear me yes you did that's okay. Should I continue? Yes. What? Item 33? Oh, you're going back. Okay. Yeah. Roll call in item number 33 for approval. Councilwoman Khan? Yes. Councilwoman Davila? Yes, for ambulances. 33. I'm sorry, we're doing 33? Yes, ma'am. Can I pass for a minute, please? 
Okay, so Councilman Jackson. Oh, wait a minute, no. My vote is yes. Thank you, Councilman Jackson. I had to read it. <laughs> For the fire department, 33. Yes. Councilman Kali. Yes. Councilman Mendez. Yes, Madam Clerk. Um, Councilman Velez. Most needed. My vote is yes. Mr. President. Yes. The vote is seven in favor, two absent. Item number 33 is hereby adopted. 34. Mr. President. 34, Madam Clerk. Next item is item number 34, resolution authorizing the award of contract to FFI Apparatus LLC for the purchase and delivery of one 2021 heavy duty cinder non walk in rescue truck product code FS 19LD08 for the fire department under the Houston Galveston area council contract number FS 12 19 so fire. Resolution 21311. So moved. So it was moved by Councilman Mendez. I can't do it Davila. no more. I can't. Second by it's not me, Councilwoman it's Davila. Yeah, yeah everybody. He also yeah, moved by Councilwoman Cotton? Yeah, I, I, got moved the same by I got the same tone of Mendez. We sing alike. Listen, if, if it's that important, you know, I understand. Listen, I'm trying my best to try to hear here. Let's good. just put a system in place where the lights will go off because I'm trying my best here. Um, roll call, Madam Clerk. Okay, so we have a motion on the floor, Mr. President, by Councilman Velez mm -hmm. and second by Councilwoman Davila. And Cotton. And Councilman Cotton. No, Thank you. Roll call in item number 34 for approval. Oh. Councilwoman Cotton? Yes. Councilman Jackson? I mean, sorry, Councilman <laughs> Davila? I'm still here. <laughs> I know, I yes. saw you. I move it. Councilman Davila, you said yes? Yes. Thank you so very much. Councilman Jackson? Yes. Councilman Kalik? Yes. Councilman Mendez? <laughs> yes, Madam Clerk. Councilman Beams? <laughs> appears I missed something. My vote is yes. Councilman Blaze? Uh, the, let the record reflect that Mendes also move it. My vote is yes. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. President. Yeah, I appreciate the excitement from my colleagues. I just hope the auction that we have on that property on 3rd Avenue, uh, that the bidders are so anxious to, you know, put their money on that property also, uh, will do great. Uh, my vote is yes, Madam Clerk. Thank you. The vote is eight in favor, one absent. Oh, Item yeah. number 34 is hereby adopted. Number 32. Yes, sir. Next item is item number 32. Item number 32 reads Resolution authorizing the Department of Community Development to submit the 2021 2022 one year annual action plan to the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development. Community Development Resolution 21309. So, so moved. Second. <laughs> so moved by Councilman Davila, moved by Councilman Velez, and second by uh, Councilman Mims. Roll call. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Mm -hmm. Yes, Mr. President. Roll call in item, for item number 32, Councilwoman yes. um, Cotton. Thank you, Madam Clerk. I just want to say that we did vetted this in Community Development Committee, mm -hmm. uh, and we all agreed to um, put it forward. So with that being said, Madam Clerk, my vote is yes. Yes. Councilwoman Davila. My vote is yes. Councilman Jackson. Yes. Councilman Kalik. Yes. Councilman Mendez. Yes, Madam Clerk. Councilman Mims. Yes. Councilman Velez. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. The vote is eight in favor, one absent. Item number 32 is hereby adopted. Madam Clerk, let's just go in order now. Let's go to number 35. 35? Yes. Next item is item number 35. And item number 35 reads, resolution authorizing award of contracts for a redevelopment attorney and related matters for the city of Patterson. Law resolution 21-312. So moved. <laughs> So moved by Councilwoman Mims, and who's the other person? Yes. And second by Councilman Velez. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Roll call in item number 35 for approval. Councilwoman Khan? Yes. Councilwoman Davila? Corporation Council, mm -hmm. I hope that under your leadership uh, in the city of Patterson in the law department that these uh, attorneys that will be coming on and working on city matters, uh, that they do it diligently and quickly and uh, in the best interest of the city. My vote is yes. 
Thank you. Councilman Jackson? Yes. Councilman Kali? Yes. Councilman Mendez? Yes, Madam Clerk. Councilman Mims? Yes. Councilman Velez? Definitely, yes. Mr. President? Yes. The vote is eight in favor, one absent. Item number 35 is hereby adopted. Number Did 36. you say 36, Mr. President? Yes. Next item is item number 36, resolution authorizing submission of a grant application and agreement to the 2020 2022 Municipal and Aid Grant Program under the New Jersey Transportation Trust Fund, Department of Public Works, Resolution 21313. So moved by Councilman Velez, second by uh, Councilman Mendes. Mm -hmm. So moved by Councilman Mendes and second by Velez. Uh, what was it? Who was first? We leave it in that order, yeah, Madam Clerk. Like uh, yeah. uh, Mendes and Velez. That's okay. okay. I have it, Mr. President. May I continue with the roll call, Madam Clerk? Yes, there's no discussion. Roll call, yes, sir. Roll call item number 36 for approval. Councilwoman Khan? 36. Yes. Councilwoman Davila? Mm -hmm. Pass. Councilman Jackson? Yes. Councilman Kali? Yes. Councilman Mendez? Yes, Madam Clerk. Councilman Mims? Um, yes. Councilman Velez? Hopefully they give us the max for we can improve our roads and pay dredge and safety. My vote is yes. Thank you. Um, Councilman Davila? My vote is yes. Mr. President? Yes. The vote is eight in favor, one absent. Item number 36 is hereby adopted. Council President, just really quickly, item number 31 to Corporation Council, it was approved earlier. Uh, the resolution says 50th. The resolution should read 60th. Anniversary. Six zero. Six zero instead of five zero. So can we? Um, I don't. It, I don't think it's a material change. Uh, so I'm sure they'll be able to change it without us, you know, having to go back and. Okay. I just wanted to put it on the record. Right, Madam Clerk. Yes, you're correct because we didn't read it in the title. Yeah. If okay. We could just reread it. So we just make the legal, we make the, the, the correction. Yeah, we it was not in the title. So I think we should not have a problem. It's we'll have it, we, we'll it's, have it corrected. It's not in the title, but it's the title of the resolution. But we, but we, we'll correct it. We okay. have legal to correct it. Thank you. I just want to put it on record because the okay. church is watching. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Uh, um, what item, Mr. President? Uh, next item, Madam Clerk. I think it's number 30, uh, 37. 37. Just did 36. Next item is item number 37. Item number 37 reads, resolution authorizing award of contract to Continental Hardware Inc. on the Morris County Cooperative Pricing for the purchase of lumber, installation, and hardware from the Department of Public Works. Public Works Resolution 21-314. Move it. Second. It's discussion. Moved by Councilman Mendez. Mr. President. Mendez and second by Mims. Mm -hmm. Okay, moved by Councilman Mendez, second by um, Councilman Mims. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Good. I asked for discussion. I think you have a good discussion. Yeah, asked for discussion. Who asked for discussion? I, I did. I just want to clarify Mendes. something here, please. Uh, okay, where's this? Where's this hardware ink is located? I, I'm looking for the address. I don't. I don't see it. Here. So, in other words, is uh, Continental Hardware Inc. is located at Fort Delancey Street, Newark, New Jersey. That's the address. Here. So, uh, Director, so you're telling me that the Public Works needs to go out there to Newark and get the supply that they need? It was a cheaper price through the co-op. Hmm. Cool. Uh, you proceed, Director. What was that? No, no. Is that it was, the, a it was a cheaper price through the co-op. Oh, okay, so uh, uh, is the two hundred and fifty thousand dollars? Oh no, twenty-five hundred. Correct. Oh, not to exceed twenty-five. Twenty-five thousand. I believe. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because I I, I see that I the wrong missing folder. I don't have the the resolutions. Uh, no, I was see. I was looking here. That I think it was a typo. I, I saw like two hundred and fifty thousand, but it's it's actually twenty-five hundred. Uh, 25,000? 
Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, they put a period in the back, not exceed, but uh, that's okay. So they have to go down to Newark and pick up anything that they want to purchase? Yes. And, oh, it's under, 20, it's under 40, so okay. All right, all right, all right. Thank you, thank you. Mr. President, may I continue with, me with the roll call? Yes, roll call, Madam Clerk. Okay, roll call in item number 37 for approval. Councilwoman um, Cotton? Yes. Councilwoman Davila? Yes. Councilman Jackson? Thank you, Madam Clerk. So understanding that our director and um, our purchasing agent is doing the responsible thing, and understand the, understanding the, um, the issue with making purchases through the co-op and the necessity for doing so. Um, I still have a difficult time supporting these items because uh, as we continue to spend money outside our community, it's a, it's, a, it's a way in which money continues to leave our community, establishments that are here that could possibly provide jobs. And furthermore, the uh, trafficking back and forth to this establishment um, we got to consider gas factoring and 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 the uh, work the, the workforce that we have to pay employees to do that transport. You know, I, I, I'm having a very difficult time supporting this thing, and, and not no no slight on the director and or uh, the purchasing agent. I understand you guys' um, perspective, but I'm, I'm going to support with uh, what I believe is best for Patterson. It's home. Home purchasing is necessary. My vote is no, Madam Clerk. Thank you. Councilman Kalik? My vote is yes, Madam Clerk. Councilman Mendez? Thank you, Madam Clerk. Um, let that record reflect that this item was discussed on uh, the committee meeting and approved, so my vote is yes, Madam Clerk. Councilman Mims? Um, you know, I've, I've heard and had various conversations um, with um, our purchaser, Harry and he highly recommends, and I know they do a lot of cost savings across the state. Mm -hmm. um, and so with that said, I'm glad that Patterson is now coming aboard to be a part of this cooperative pricing that they do and give so many wonderful, um, wonderful accommodations to municipalities. My vote is yes. Councilman Village. You know, we have hardware stores in the city of Patterson, especially in the Fifth Ward. You know, um, and I, I don't have nothing against the process. I think that um, I would now. Thank you, Mr. President. I'm going to speak on this, but let's just not waste the time. Um, on this item, uh, my vote is yes. The vote is six in favor, two against, one absent. Item number 37 is hereby adopted. Number 38, Madam Clerk. Yes, sir. Next item is item number 38. Item number 38 reads resolution authorizing the renewal of a contract with TG Neal Grant Hardware for purchase and delivery of hardware supplies for bid number 21.09. For the City of Patterson, Public Works Resolution 21315. So move. Second. second. Moved by Councilman Velez, second by Councilman Mims. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Roll call in item number 38 for approval. Councilwoman Cotton. Yes. Councilwoman Davila. Yes. Councilman Jackson. Pass, Madam Clerk. Councilman Kali? Yes. Councilman Mendez? Yes, Madam Clerk. Councilman Mims? Yep. Councilman Velez? I'm happy that the taxpayer money is staying in Patterson. My vote is yes. Councilman Jackson? Yes. Mr. President? Yes. The vote is eight in favor. One absent item number 38 is hereby adopted. 39, Mr. President? Before we proceed, uh, just uh, Corporation Council. Sorry. What's the intent of including this language in this in this contract? It says this contract may be subject to assist, uh, existing memorandum of understanding between the city of the state of New Jersey, Department of Community Affairs. Like, what's the purpose? Ooh. 
Harry, you want to come up to the podium if you wrote this? I just want to know what's the purpose of including that language in there. Like, like we know we're, you know, we we know that we enter into a, a memorandum of understanding. It's, it's just that lately we we we're looking at it like it's always been written on stones. The stuff that that that's written there, and and, and this, I'm not taking a jab at this resolution per se. It's just a lot of the discussion that we've been having year after year about DCA and us. You know, we're the governing body. I just want to know, like, that language is included in there. Like, what's the purpose of it? What, what, you know? Oh. At so, the bottom of the grand At the bottom, language. yes. All the mic comes to the president. The mic. The mic. Oh, sorry. No, it's on. Just okay. get closer. It's on. Good evening, council member, council president. Good evening. Good evening. The, that language is in, in all the resolutions that we put together okay. due to the fact, like, uh, anything, anything that the city contract for has to be approved by DCA. So, I mean, they, we, they we approve it before or after us? Because this is the first for me. I didn't, I didn't I, know, I, think, I understand we have I monitors think, here, but I didn't, I, I didn't know that, that, that DCA have to approve any contracts. If that's the case, it doesn't, it doesn't make, no, it never. If I may clarify. Never. Yeah, if can you I clarify? Because it's never, and I don't want to hear you know, people shaking. If now we're going to Trenton tomorrow, uh, it can be. It, it's a uh, process. It's, yeah. it's, uh, uh, anything that is prepared by the city, and these the contracts, they have formed that is used in order for the CA to know what, what we're planning to do. Expenses, why? The, the contract amount is professional service, you have regular contract, and the amount inclusive of. So. It, it doesn't necessarily mean that we have to go to DCA for approval, Council President. It just says that you know this may be subject to our memorandum of understanding. It doesn't necessarily mean that it will be subject to the memorandum of understanding. So I think this language here just ensures that to the extent that it is subject to it, we're complying with it, and to the extent that it's not, it's not. Understood, but I just want to make it clear, clear that once we vote, DCA cannot come and say we cannot spend this money because we have the authority. Once the budget is approved, we have the authority to spend the money. So DCA, after a vote, cannot come and say that, oh, we didn't approve this. I just want to make sure that that's clear. Because we, we have to, you know, we have to create the boundaries here. We're giving, we're giving DCA too much authority just because we get $20, $20 million. This, this needs to stop. It's frustrating. Let's continue, Madam Clerk. With 39, Mr. President? 39? 39. Yes. 39. Next item is item number 39, resolution authorizing award of contract to Sherwin Williams Company on the Morris County Cooperative Pricing for the purchase of paint supplies for the Department of Public Works, Public Works Resolution 21316. So moved. Second. Moved by Councilman Mendes, second by Councilwoman Mims. Nevertheless. And Velez, roll call, Madam Clerk. Roll call in item number 39 for approval, Councilman Abdelaziz. Yes. Councilwoman Cotton. Yes. Councilman Davila. Yes. Councilman Jackson. Yes. Councilman Khalid. Yes. Councilman Mendez. Yes. Councilman Mims. Yes. Councilman Velez. There's some special paint that is not fine in anywhere in any company, so I guess this is going to be good. Yeah, uh, you know. And um, it's good that um, at least we follow a memorandum of understanding that we're not going to overspend and this and that. So my vote is yes. Mr. President? Yes. The vote is nine in favor, none against. Item number 39 is hereby adopted. 40? Number 40, Madam Clerk. Next item is item number 40, resolution authorizing the renewal of a contract with Circle Janitorial Supplies for the purchase and delivery of janitorial supplies for bid number 21.07 for the City of Patterson Public Works Resolution 21317. So move. So move by Councilman Velez, second by Councilman Davila and um, Mendez. Roll call, Madam Clerk. <coughs> Roll call in item number 40 for approval. Councilman Abdelaziz? Yes. Councilwoman Khan? Yes. Councilman Davila? Yes. Councilman Jackson? Yes. Councilman Khalid? Yes. Councilman Mendez? Yes. Councilman, um, Councilman Velez? 
Yes. Councilwoman uh, Mims? Yes. All right. You're almost done, right? You're Mr. President. Mr. President, item number 40. He's out of his desk. He's getting back there. Your vote on item number 40, Mr. President? Yes. The vote is nine in favor, none against. Item number 40 is hereby adopted. Now Council still, President. Ms. Okay. Motion to adjourn. Well, how you figure? No. We still have to. Oh, we have, we have other items. We have um, nine. We have nine. Do we vote on nine? Twenty-four, twenty-five, and twenty-six. Correct. So let's do let's do nine. Nine. Yes. Okay. Next item is item number nine. Give me one second, Mr. President. I have to read it for this. Item number nine is the introduction of the 2021 municipal budget. Resolution authorizing reading of the calendar year 2021 municipal budget by title only and introduction of the calendar year 2021 municipal budget finance resolution 21286. So moved. So moved by Councilman Mims, second by Councilman Velez. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Yes, Mr. President. Roll call in item number nine, Councilman Abdelaziz. Councilwoman Cotton? They're going to. Uh, no, no one called for a discussion, so we're voting. <coughs> your mic, your mic. This is only an introduction by title only. I'm going to have a long weekend coming up. So, but we need to introduce it. We're not voting on it, um, people in the community. Uh, and with that being said, my vote is yes to introduce to introduce the budget. Thank Madam you, Clerk. thank you, Councilman Davila. I'm in agreement that uh, in order to have a healthy discussion, definitely there has to be a document in front of us. And um, I understand that it's been introduced. I know it's title only. I have the budget right here. Mm -hmm. uh, this is what we are elected to do, mm -hmm. and um, with that, I am going to vote yes uh, to proceed with mm -hmm. the reading of the calendar year 2021 municipal budget. My vote is yes. Thank you. Councilman Jackson? Yes. Councilman Kalik? Our council president keeps talking about budget is a plan. If there is a plan in, in this budget, I think it's a failed plan. I haven't seen any improvement for whole year. Even though if they introduce budget, my vote is no. Councilman Mendez. Th thank you, Madam Clerk. We're voting on the you know um, 2021 municipal budget introducing by title only. I, I definitely looking forward to have a conversation with administration and be able to come up into an agreement, um, at least meeting halfway. Um, understanding that our my concern is a service that we're looking for that we need to provide to the community so I'm expecting that those services are reflected in those numbers so I'm looking forward for that discussion so my vote is yes Madam Clerk thank you Councilman Mims yes Councilman Villain thank you for introduction of this budget um, I received a nice beautiful letter from the state of New Jersey that Madam BA just sent us about yesterday I believe that the city of Patterson was awarded $21 million, $57,166.25. According to them, is 85% of the previous year, plus $104,616.25. I would like to have a big discussion what that will represent in our budget, okay? And uh, what, will be, um, what will be the difference? without going to taxpayer money. Making sure that this administration is fiscal and responsible, and please, let's have a healthy discussion. My vote is yes. Councilman Abdelaziz. Thank you, Madam Clerk. So I wanna 
I'm not going to say I look forward to. I've been having constant communication with the administration. When I received this last week, I've been going through it page by page. So this is not the first time I've had it. I've already addressed some concerns with the mayor um, about what I want to see in this plan. Um, the good news is, and the administration did give us an introduced budget that has a municipal tax levy that's flat. Usually we get budgets that has increases in the municipal tax levy, so I like where we're starting. I like where we're starting because it, it's an area where it's not hurting the taxpayers. So I want to re remind the taxpayers, this introduced budget that we have in front of us, it, the municipal portion of your tax bill is remaining flat, and we're going to look through this and see if we can find what I like to hear, and I think the taxpayers like to hear, a decrease in the municipal levy. I know it's hard. I know, I know what the DCA states, but we'll see. Well, I look forward to uh, continue that dialogue with the administration. My vote is yes. Thank you. Mr. President. So I urge my council colleagues that, you know, this is an introduced budget. We need to look at it very closely and recommend any, any changes that you want to see. Speak to the administration um, in regards to, you know, the services that, that or how this budget would improve some of the services um, and provide some input also. We already did this during the budget hearings. Um, but we still, you know, this is an introduced budget. Those items have changed a little bit since the introduced, uh, since we had the budget hearings. Um, but something that this budget has that's encouraging, where it seems like, you know, that things are going to come back to normal. And I know we have a, a significant increase in, in, in recreation in this city. And uh, I'm encouraged, you know, the, our kids, you know, are, are being affected mentally, a lot of them, just from being inside their home, they're not even interacting with their friends. And uh, I just hope that the resources that, that we have included in there um, are going to be used uh, effectively to provide uh, the recreation necessary for this, uh, for our youth. Uh, but we still got a lot of work to do. Um, the next step is to adopt the budget. Uh, once again, I urge you to look into this because once we adopt it, that is the plan that will be in place to provide the services, um, and then we can do nothing after that. My vote is yes. Thank you, Mr. President. The vote is eight in favor, one against. Item number nine is hereby approved. Public hearing and adoption on this budget will be held at the next regular meeting of July 20th, 2021 at 7 p.m. Num number 24, Madam Clerk. Council President, before. July 20th. Council President. July 20th. Con before you, you, you jump to the other, before you jump to the other item, you know, um, it's understanding and I, I, I hear the privilege that other council member has to go to administration and discuss theory, uh, the situation about the budget. I know we have a committee of uh, uh, finance that meet regularly um, every week. Um, it would be nice that the committee uh, chair of finance highlight the whole entire council uh, when it comes up to this decision because some, some conversation are made inside those committee that we are, we don't know what they talk about. And if, um, I don't know if they, Thank you, Council President. Thank you, Council Member Um it, It's a simple request. I understand that there's a committee of finance and they have uh, uh, the, your discussions and this and that. As I will work individually to do our homework, I understand that. Uh, but if there's anything that the committee could highlight into the re remaining members of the council, instead of going to a, a discussion or arguments so or whatever, you could do so. I'm, so, I'm, so, I'm, way, so, I'm, I'm yeah. ready to do that. So, so Council Member Les, uh, like I stated, we have budget hearings, which a lot of the council members didn't attend. I don't recall who was here, who wasn't. But now I'm in my third year, and when we have, and when we have uh, budget hearings, uh, a lot of the council members doesn't even don't even show up. We and this is middle, middle, hold on, middle. Councilman. This is not for you. Oh, okay. I, I, I said I don't even I don't even recall who was here or not. I don't take attendance. All I know is that we're a body of nine. 
sometime we would have to act as a committee. And Madam Clerk, remember that we had those discussions if we could continue or not with the meeting. Because at one time we only had four people. We didn't even have five. And we continue as a committee. Right. And, and there right. was a time we right. only had three. So what this says is this, you know, and again, not going to disclose because I don't really recall who was here or not. I just know I was here. And uh, when we discussing the budget with the administration, this is the level of service that we complain about often. This is the services that will be provided to the community, or at least the resources. Let me rephrase. This is the resources that we're allocating for the services that we provided. Now, once we approve that, it is the job of the administration to provide them. Correct. But, Councilman, to your question, uh, this process, this budget process, is, didn't just start now. This started months and months and months ago. So, just want to add. I'm that. aware. I'm aware. All right. So, could we continue, Madam Clerk? With number 24, sir? Yes. Sure. Next item is item number 24. Resolution authorizing an emergency contract agreement with Citywide Towing, Inc. for towing and impound yard services for the Sapir Patterson. Resolution 21-301. So move. Second. Discussion. Councilman Velez. Councilman Mendez. Oh, Mems. Moved by Velez, second by Mems. Okay. Moved by Councilman Velez and second. I, I apologize. I'm so who, who moved Moved by Velez, second by Mems. Moved by Councilman hey. Velez, second by Councilman Mems. Discussion, Councilman Discussion, Councilman Mendez. Uh, j just a quick comment on this. Uh, on, uh, uh, through the chair, Tramara BA, the, the class, the contract with class end on May 31st. Who are we using right now um, since the contract finished on May 31st? Now we voted on that, on this emergency right now. So are we already using this company? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes, and if you want Anyone the else? agent to. Okay, so, 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 so this is my comment, Madam BA, and I, and I definitely hope that we could have a, a little, a, a sensitive conversation with the company that we will voting to, to, to provide this service. Um, this community has been suffering for many years with classic in terms of the fee that they've been charging for the, in the city of Patterson. Sometimes $280 for a few blocks, $300. And I know we're getting, I don't know how much we're getting, how much is the portion that, that I understand that was $25 per towing per, uh, the class he used to pay the city of Patterson. And definitely to see the 45. contract moving forward because I know we're going to, we, uh, by putting an emergency contract, you don't have to go out for a bit. We understand that. And this contract is going to be going to start in June 1st, 2021, and then in November 30, 2021 of this year. So we definitely need to know who, who we're going to bring permanent in the city of Patterson to provide the service because the community has been suffering for the longest with Classy and the, and the fee that they've been charging the residents of the city of Patterson. That's my only comment. So, so, on that minute, so, on that. so, 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 council members, um, we did have, I did have a conversation in, in finance uh, because we requested one time for a study to be done. Uh, you recall, Harry, uh, to see if a feasibility, a feasibility study to see if we could provide the services ourselves because there was not another company in Patterson that was able to, or that had the capacity to provide it. But in regards to the fees, I think there's a, a state law now that limits the amount of fees. Is that That's correct? correct? That's correct, Council President. Any, any tour in the state of New Jersey has to be guided by the New Jersey pol state police rates. And those rates are incorporated in this emergency contract. And I, I believe I have that. When did, when did this law change? I think it was, re it's, it's not too long ago, yeah, right? Last year. It's a thing last recently, year. and every year the, the state police provide the rates for the year, and the, we got it right now for the, two, the two, 2021 rates. And only to compare, for example, on the first rate, uh, with Classic was 240 with this contract under the law. Any towers cannot charge more than 175, I believe we can so, so you're correct, Councilman Mendez. We, we have suffered for too many years with, mm -hmm. the, with the excessive rates. Mm -hmm. But at least now, uh, you know, now there's a law from the state uh, in place that, that limits the, the, 
the charges from the towing companies. But also, council, if you may, council president, not only that, but there's another uh, another charge that they play with, yeah. and it's the uh, every time the car stay in the yard for for the, for, the, for an additional day, that's not under the state law, if I'm understand. Uh, it, that's you know, if I, and I believe that I'm correct. So storage, storage. It's Is not that, it's not under the law now, I'm and, I, and it, I'm, I'm sorry. It's also, it also under the law. It's, yeah, because it all started with the back in three, four years ago with the predators law that everybody was charging whatever they were wishing to charge. So the state in, in intervened and there were many, many companies that they, they were doing things that they don't supposed to. So that's the reason the state said, you know, we want to take care of this and we're going to establish the rates and the so the, the state police actually promulgate every year uh, the flat rate for, like I mentioned before, 175, and also for the storage. So it, it actually no, no one, no one is going to come back here to the administration or to the council members to say, listen, I have a hover charge because they, could, they cannot do that. Okay. How, about, um, how, about, how about the amount that comes back to the city, Harry? That's not, how about the amount that comes back to the city? That's not mandated by law. But, and, but, and that's what we could. But that's, that's I'm sorry. That was that was my next question. Classic but I, used to go be ahead, 45. Huh? Classic was 45. No, no, no. I'm saying that's not mandated. So in the future, I understand that they're limited. But if we ever go to bid, I know we're not in the in the business of penalizing our residents to collect a fee. But if they're collecting a fee, then we should get you know if they're going to collect a fee amount anyways, we should try to get you know as much as possible in return. That, so. that conversation we, we had with my MBA, and uh, we, yeah. I mean, we had a couple of conversations, so we definitely, we that, will, look, we that, will. Council we will that's, why I trust, President. that's why I trust you, Harry, I trust your work, I appreciate it. Councilwoman Davila. So, so uh, on that note, I, I want to share that today I had my first encounter with this company. I had a constituent matter that was addressed to me, and I made a phone call. I don't know them, I don't know where they are, where they're located, I didn't have this in front of me. I know it was Hawthorne. Um, I had a conversation with the director, Madam BA, and you know, I said, you know, I, I felt like now our residents have to pay Uber to get to a place and you know, he clearly explained to me that it's literally like almost behind Duffy's or something like that, right? So I said, okay, so I could see very close to Patterson. But what I wanted to share with my colleagues was this. When I made the phone call, the person behind that phone didn't know who I was and was so polite. The second thing, I then said who I was and I gave her the information. I said, can you please explain what occurred? And she very nicely said, no, that is incorrect. We take pictures. So they actually took a picture before they took the car and the reason why they took the car with the picture and I said, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I wanna see. And so I'm in agreement with you, uh, Council President. I, I don't know them from you know, a can of paint, but I'm gonna tell you this. That first encounter, that first impression counts. So I know that this is only for six months. I understood the emergency. Uh, but I'm in, in agreement, Council President, that when we do go out to bid, that there is some type of consideration and compensation for our city. Council Thank President. You. Council President. Councilman Velez and then Councilman Jackson. I, um, you know, I don't have nothing wrong to say of the past service. They had also been generous to our city in some aspect. Um, to our resident, well, in the time that I always approached them. I had a good experience with Frank, Frank Jr. Uh, yesterday, um, and um, they was well understanding. The problem I have is, and not, it's not with the towing company, I know they're gonna perform a great job, they've been so, um, so professional over the phone, and, and, and understanding, and let me tell you this, understanding the needs of the residents of Patterson. If, 
through the chair on directing my statements. And um, the, the situation I have is, and we addressed this at the, um, at the uh, I was at the, um, at the committee meeting for DPW the other day, and um, when we had PCG and the construction company, Madam, Madam Ruby Cotton will, will, will refresh the mind on this, is that this company are putting signs on cones three, four hours before the construction starts. On Park Avenue, East 19, so forth, they put a cone, not even 24 hours, the next day in the morning, the cart is tall. The constituents don't have a schedule, and this was addressed in the past. So the residents of Patterson you know, if they're gonna get hit with a tow, you, we, hate, we, need to listen, we need to look into well creating that tow unnecessary. Mm -hmm. But I understand this company, I had an experience with them yesterday, and, um, and they are a real compassionate company. They understand Patterson needs, and hopefully in this six, six months, uh, they're gonna be with us, um, a couple months, I believe it is. Yeah, right? Um, now, uh, Savalos, question. Yes. This is the only company that um, a bid on this, or participate, or put a proposal. Through the chair, council president. No, it, but because it was an emergency, we were the administration was notified that Classic was closing the doors immediately. With the police department, the director special, we start looking for sources because this, this is something that is not like a, a regular contract per se, like a, we're going to buy a hardware supply or something. This is a lot of state law that is taking place. The site has to be a minimum two acres or more. So we, I, we contacted a couple, couple companies under the state contract, but it happened to be in East Rue, therefore, are you, number one, Nick Toy. And then when we called them, the first thing they said, if we're going to help the city of Patterson, we need at least 90 days until August to see if we have the room that you need. So that definitely for us, but no, no. We, cannot, we were not in the ability to wait till August. That probably in what we tell, listen, we, didn't, we don't have a space for you. So we did another uh, search and the, around the town and the uh, surrounding areas. And the city wide came about it and the Jerry uh, special contacted, talked to them, and they, yes, they said we willing and able to help you because they knew there was an emergency. Cor and correct me, uh, Harry, uh, this is the first time that I see a contract that if uh, expired, you could go month to month. No. This is the first time I see it. No. What you said is it's going to be for six months under the emergency, and I need to go out to bid on this contract. And for whatever reason, in six months, we don't have a solid contract for towing. We're going to require from the same vendor to allow the city to go month per month okay. until we have a new bid and a new contractor. All right, uh, through the chair, uh, through the chair, uh, Councilwoman, uh, the uh, can you supply us an email of the rates, please, for we go, um, uh, that they have now? Uh, oh, you have it, but okay. You, you, I could get a copy later on, or yes. you could email me. Just yes. in case my constituents ask why and this okay. and that, I could know, I could tell them the rates or whatever. Thank okay. you. Thank you, Councilman Velez. Sure Thank you, Harry, for all that you do. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Thank yes, you. Madam President. Council Roll call President. it item number two. Oh, hold on, he had the. Yeah. Councilman Jackson. Thank you, Council President. So first and foremost, um, it's an empty room now. The former um, uh, tow company would, would used to provide photographs and things of that nature as well. Yeah. And, and Mr. Savalas, understanding that there's now a state law which uh, uh, outlines the details or specifics in regard to cost factoring, um, 
My question is to, through, through uh, yourself, to Corporation Council, as well as uh, Madam BA, so in the event that this company should violate such state law, I mean, there's many state laws that many tow companies have violated. It was, it was, it was relevant several years back <coughs> where you couldn't hire spotters, and certain tow companies would hire spotters to target certain locations and things of that nature. And here's just another example, Corporation Council, that I spoke to you about quite, uh, quite some time ago, where a resident's car was towed at um, 7.42 in the, in the a.m., where specifically outlined in, in the city, city uh, statute, as well as um, any applicable laws, that the road was not supposed to be shut down prior to that time. Now. Are we expecting residents to take on the expenses and go out and um, have to take on a legal battle with this company if they potentially violate the laws that set forth? Or is the city gonna take, take uh, you know, into account that we are representing our residents as well, and if a company violates a law, it should be the city who stands forward on behalf of those residents. So we'd like for you to answer that on record uh, as well as um, the former contract with the previous vendor, understanding whatever s scenarios they may, may be going out of, go going through. Um, was there some type of out clause in, in, the, in, the, in the contract that allowed them to, um, or did their contract just come to an end? Was it the end of the contract or did they well, request to be out early? Yes, it was the end of the contract for us. We then, they provided an extension and after the tension, I think things start to get a little d difficult for them. And then they start Understood. sending the emails, prep okay. because I want to be open only to July. Then July became May. No, I understand. All right, very good. Thank you. I appreciate okay. that. And Corporation Council, if you can, please, what, how do we expect to um, deal with the constituents' issues? Because as of now, we're asking constituents to go to court take off work, um, hire, potentially hire an attorney when they're, they're, the law has been violated and their rights have been violated. So what's the city's position moving forward with constituents receiving uh, uh, tickets that they should not be receiving? And in this case, if they're told, because that constituents issues that I brought to you, they were ticketed, they were told, they lost a day at work, and yet his concerns still have not been answered to. Corporation Council. Thank you, uh, uh, Dr. Mims. So um, I, I briefly spoke with the BA, but in terms of addressing uh, the issue you raised about wrongful toes, I think it's something that we can build into the contract um, that if there is a wrongful toe, there's a refund uh, that has to be issued. And I think that would, mm -hmm. You know, building something like that automatically into the contract would save the residents' time and energy of having to go fight this. Uh, in relationship to tickets that uh, are alleged to have been improperly written, as I advised you before, the advice remains unchanged. Have them fight it in court. Um, um, I understand that that's an inconvenience, but before any sort of uh, legal uh, procedures uh, can proceed, uh, that ticket has to be resolved. It can't be a situation in which someone says, I got a wrongful ticket. They went, they paid it, essentially pleading guilty or, or, or being convicted of a ticket, and then coming back and trying to argue thereafter that it was a wrongful ticket. Corporation counsel, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm taking huge issue with that. So if an officer who works for the city writes a ticket that should not have been written or is wrongfully written, we're expecting that the constituent go to the court and fight it. And not only that, if they don't have the wherewithal to do so and don't want to take off work, and they say, well, I'm just gonna pay it, that we're not going to um, even consider not only to refund them, but to look into the matter. They've been wrongfully, they've been wronged. Treat it, you know, uh, in, against accordance to the laws that this council sets forward and the administration is giving the legislators, I'm a legislator, I'm, essentially it should be the administration that's going out to deal with the constituents issue, but obviously this, the, you know, the administration is, fail, is, is refusing to do so, 
So on his behalf, I'm here asking, why does the constituent have to go to court to fight a ticket he was wrongfully issued? If I may, uh, Council President, M Madam Vice President, if I may. Yes, Council, um, um, Corporation Council. Thank you for, for recognizing me. Um, like I said, Councilman Jackson, and I certainly understand your position and it's counterintuitive, but uh, unfortunately, I don't think that the courts and the prosecutors uh, can take the word of every constituent who says that they got a ticket improperly. And the reason why they have to go down to court is I believe our prosecutors are very reasonable. They listen. Um, if there's evidence, if there's a photograph, if there's something else, I know for a fact that our prosecutors will take that into account and likely dismiss the ticket if it was wrongfully issued. And I have no problem um, if you would like Councilman Jackson, and actually I might do this in any event, but certainly with your uh, suggestion, reminding our prosecutors in municipal court that they are to scrutinize these tickets, um, give our, uh, our citizens a fair shake, which I believe they already do, and, and not hesitate uh, one second if it was improperly issued to dismiss it. But barring that, Councilman Jackson, we just can't have a situation, I think, where members of the public say they got a ticket uh, unlawfully or wrongfully, and we just dismiss tickets based on that. Corporation Council, that's, that's, that's not my expectation. If we have an ordinance that says a road should not be closed before 9 a.m. and a constituent is ticketed at 742, how is it, how, how is it cons a constituent going to wrongfully argue? Now, now we're asking them to take off a day of work which they were already forced to lose a day's pay. So is, the city, is it the city's position now to, to look to reimburse not only for the ticket but the tow as well as two, two days of pay? Because at, at that point, I mean, the, the, the constituent has been wrongfully treated by our officers and our division, Department of um, Community Improvements or whomever is overseeing these, these construction projects that's allowing these roads. Let me just say the BA's office, really. Because the BA's office is refusing to deal with these issues, allowing roads to continuously be closed before the allotted time we have a clear ordinance and a constituent was ticketed, told, loss of days of work. I spoke to you about this several months ago, and yet the constituents still texting me like, so what's going on? I mean, what, how, are we, what, how are we treating our residents here? That's, I mean, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. Maybe the BA should answer it or, because it, it doesn't seem <laughs> to make any sense to me that, that a constituent would have to deal with these types of issues and then the people who wronged him, the city, is telling this, the constituent, no, take another day off of work, go hire an attorney, or do whatever you have to do to, to go in court and defend yourself, and possibly the prosecutor may be, um, uh, you know, treat, you, treat you with some type of dignity at this point. When you were wrongfully treated, we see the ticket clearly says 742. We know the ordinance says 9 a.m. Why, we, why do we put people through a song and dance when it's the city who, 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 who created the infraction? Thank you. Councilman Velaz? Uh, yeah, uh, to the chair, um, correct me if um, um, corporate counsel, if I'm wrong. Yeah. I'm sorry, did you need something for me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yes, before, we, uh, I didn't know that you was uh, talking to us about it. Uh, okay. Corrected me if I'm wrong. Um, I believe that the, uh, the, uh, the statute do not allow um, any police officer, any government um, official, or any court um, employee to torch or to throw away a ticket already given by a um, by a um, a police officer, law enforcement, that the only person that have to and do that by statute is a uh, an honorable judge, listing the facts of this the ticket given. Uh, yes, Councilman Velez, and, and thank you for that question, and, and uh, Madam President, if I may respond. Corporation Council. Thank you. I'll try to be brief. So yes, uh, Councilman Velez, that's an astute observation. Uh, you know we have. Great judges like Judge Abdel Hadi, mm -hmm. um, who our citizens go before and I believe get more than a fair shake. But before they go in front of the judge, they do conference the cases with prosecutors. At this point, it's virtual, most of them. 
And so, you know, they have essentially our, our Pattersonians have two opportunities, first with the, with the um, prosecutor, and then they get before a judge like Judge Abdel Hadi, who I've seen firsthand, be more than fair and hear evidence and have the courage to dismiss a ticket if it was issued in error. Correct. Last but not least, Councilman Jackson, I think the ordinance that we changed from seven to nine, okay, uh, was in 2018, I believe, was that we changed it? From seven to not, 17, right? 17. And uh, a lot of this contract was honored before the change of the owner uh, of, of the ordinance. So a lot of them was grandfather uh, based on the old ordinance. And we had that discussion. I believe uh, the chair of DPW understood that, that point uh, uh, regarding why they were still working and operating at 7 o'clock uh, with the old ordinance because the contract started way before uh, the amendment that you put forward from 9 to 5, 9 to 4. So that's why you see those roll closer to 7 o'clock. Thank you, Councilman Velez. I'm sorry, two things. One, Councilman Velez, I did not make an, an amendment to yes, any sir. ordinance that changed the time from 7 to 9, 9 a.m. The ordinance had always existed at from 7 and 9 to 9, to, and not, I'm sorry. No roads should be closed before 9 a.m. What I changed was the language that allowed the, uh, an out. So therefore, from 2017 and removing that language to 2021, I find it extremely hard to believe that there's existing contracts when these contracts are signed year to year. Secondly, through the chair, council president, or council VP at, at, actually, you know, it's rather disappointing that I, I asked a clear question and on behalf of the constituents, not on behalf of Mike Jackson. I paid tickets regardless of whatever the case might be. But I'm asking a question on behalf of the constituent and we allowed Corporation Council to skip right over the question. In fact, the DA, what are we going to do with constituents that have been wrongfully treated, their cars were towed prior to the, the times and they're, <laughs> We're telling them they have to go to court. It's clear that they've been, anyway. We, this council never holds this administration accountable, so I'm gonna just let it, Roll let call. it rest there. Roll call. Roll call. Yes, um, Mr. President. Roll call. We are on item number 24. Roll call on item number 24. Councilman Abdelaziz? Yes. Councilman Mahan? 24. Thanks. You said we're on 24? 24, yes. Um, Uh, Madam Clerk, um, I just want to say that we're gonna um, we're gonna see how this play out, but um, the contract ends in November. Um, so with that being said, I can go from I can go with them now until November, and just to see how it's gonna be. Uh, Madam Clerk, my vote is yes. Thank you, Councilwoman Davila. Classic towing ceased to do business with the city of Patterson. There was an emergency, and it had to be taken care of. Um, as I stated earlier, when I began, I was specific in saying my first encounter with this company, I don't know anyone there. Uh, I have to say that at least, I mean, anyone that gets towed, I don't think <laughs> is a good thing, but I'm saying at least in terms of where they're located, at least will not be a major burden on our um, constituency. Uh, with that said, uh, my vote is yes. Councilman Jackson? Yes. Councilman Mendez? Yes, Madam Clerk. Councilman Nim? Yes. Councilman Velez? Once again, uh, this company is going to be here for six months or probably a little bit longer or depends. At least they understand the, uh, uh, the Patterson, left and right, north, south, east, west, and um, my voice, yes. Mr. President? Yes. The vote is eight in favor, one absent. Item number 24 is hereby adopted. May I continue with 25? Well, Mr. President. Number 25, Madam Clerk. Yes, sir. Next item is item number 25, resolution authorizing an application to the Comprehensive Opioid Stimulant and Substance Abuse Program, Administration Resolution 21302. 
Move. Second. Moved by Councilman Velez, second by Councilman Davila. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Roll call for item number 25 for approval. Councilman Abdelaziz. Yes. Councilwoman Khan. I could just say on this um, um, new um, program that we're going to be starting, I'm really looking forward to see that, that right. it works. And the gentleman that I explained it last week, I'm not sure if you saw it, but I am so looking forward on how we'd be able to um, consider this because the other, the other people that are doing these drug abuse in our city is like awful. It's absolutely awful. Every day I see new people walking up and down our street. New people with suitcases and everything. Uh, so I'm looking forward to working with this person, this uh, program that they have here. With that being said, Madam Clerk, my vote is yes. Thank you. Councilwoman Dava? Yes. Councilman Jackson? Pass, Madam Clerk. Councilman Mendez? Yes, Madam Clerk. Councilman Mix? Yes. Councilman Velez? This is an application, and um, in the statement of purpose, I could see they're looking for a 900000 uh, grant. So uh, hopefully they could give us all of that. And if they, they, if they are successful, hopefully it's not a matching grant. So uh, my word is yes. Thank you. Councilman Jackson? Um. You know, we, we, every day we come here with the same issues, the same complaints. While our streets are being overrun by drug addicted people and companies or services, service providers that are not being responsible to the city of Patterson, while our community is being overran with drug addicted people taking over the streets, signs all over the place, sleeping on in front of every, everyone's door. I'm getting tired of all of these uh, drug service providers, $900,000 so people could come in here and make money to render a service that they're just not rendering. My vote is no, Madam Clerk. Thank you. Mr. President? Yes. The vote is seven in favor, one against, one absent. Item number 25 is hereby adopted. <laughs> 26? Number 26. Yes, sir. Next item is item number 26. Resolution <coughs> authorizing a solicitation of bids for towing and storage of vehicles bid number 22.04 for the City of Patterson Administration. <coughs> Resolution 21303. So move. move. Moved by Councilwoman Davila, Sorry. second by Councilman Velez and Mendez. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Roll call in item number 26 for approval. Councilman Abdelaziz. We just spoke tw uh, 20 minutes about towing. My vote is yes. Councilwoman, <laughs> Councilwoman Cotton? Yes. Councilman Davila? Yes. Councilman Jackson? Yes. Councilman Mendez? Yes, Madam Clerk. Councilman Mims? Oh, that's how you get it done. <laughs> yes. Councilman Velez? I encourage anyone out there that looking for a bid in this process, please you have your paperwork ready. Amigos hispanos que tienen compañía de remolcar el carro, preparen sus papeles, sean competitivos y participen. Participate, please. Let's say local. My vote is yes. Mr. President? Yes. The vote is eight in favor, one absent. Item number 26 is hereby adopted. Uh, Mr. Re Mr. President, just for the it's, record, it's item 41. number 41 and 42 is off. There are no other items on the agenda. Move to close. For tonight. Second. Moved by Councilman Velez, second by Councilwoman Davila. Roll report. Roll call. Yes, yes, Mr. President. Roll call. Madam Clerk. Madam Clerk. Okay. Yes, sir. I'm sorry. We had a first and a second, and Madam I just Clerk, can call. You, can you explain why Madam item 41 and why these items were pulled off? What was Madam the reason behind it? Madam I can. 42 is off because that was adopted on the election day of the 8th. Of number 42 was adopted on um, June 8th. Ooh. And number 41, I don't have a resolution. I can't vote. I'm sorry. I, number 41, I don't have a resolution and I cannot vote on in, in a document for that I don't have. We, we had another item tonight that was voted on that didn't have a resolution as well. It was on by mm. title only. We had another item that was on the agenda that had, didn't have a resolution as well. Do you mind uh, explaining what item was that, Councilman? Which item was that? Council President, can you at least say that we go, which, Council which, no, President. Hey, Councilman, Council. Councilman, 
I understand. He, he just wants to know what the Council item President, is. We're going by numbers. This is not a Chinese record. restaurant. No, a, what is the title? Council. We had an item we voted on earlier that was. That was are, are, you, are, are you referring to the budget that we voted Correct. on by title? Correct. So, Councilman, once again, I don't mean any disrespect. You've been on this council forever. The law allows you. They do this all the time with the introduced budget. They allow you. And we vote on plenty Councilman, of items by title. Councilman, that, when they say by title, do you want to elaborate? Because the law allows you to introduce a budget by title, Councilman, and you always vote on it. Okay, and we vote no, on other I, items there is, so that no. we have by no. title only all the time. No, Mr. Madam President, Clerk, please, can you uh, clear it up? Mr. President and Councilman Jackson, I can explain. The, re the, the, the budget has a resolution is in the budget, and that's what it has been we over the years. So the resolution is in the budget. That's why we vote in a resolution, because the resolution is in the bu budget. After it's been approved, Finance will do all the necessary paperwork with a vote roll call. So the resolution is actually in the budget. It's not a resolution like the regular resolution we have when we do a budget. Council President. Thank you for the clarification. Thank you, Council Madam President. Clark. Do we have a first and a second? Council we have President, a roll call? I, I, have, I, I was the first. OK, could so someone call for a discussion? I know we started a discussion. Do you want to discuss this? Uh, no, uh, the, the thing is you want to discuss closing the meeting? The thing is, I'm looking at my agenda, right? And I don't have listed. The uh, and she's uh, and I respect Madam Clerk no, that I she's saying explain. numbers and I'm directing to the council president. This is not a Chinese restaurant. I, I know things by numbers. Can I tell me at least what title it had? Council, okay. Councilman, Madam Clerk actually specified. Okay. She read the number and and either. and the description of the resolution. Oh, I didn't. I didn't hear that part. Yeah. Sorry. I, I, she, she was. Not. She was interrupted. She, she, she was. A, no, no. Hold on. She, she did not. Hold she on. didn't read it. No, 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 no. Hold on. Councilman, can you I'm hear asking. me for a minute, Councilman? Yeah. So she she was questioned why we was removing forty one and forty two. She what's went the title? to say that forty two was removed because we already approved huh? the budget last week. Right. Book. That shouldn't even be a question. No, no. This week on Tuesday. Just give it to me. But for the record, for the record, the previous meeting. For the record, and we in serious note here. If you're going to remove something that I'm requesting the title, for the record, we got a public listening out there. They don't know what's 41 and 42 I didn't 42 remove means. it. Talk to the clerk. Madam Clerk, could you please uh, address <coughs> Councilman Velez? OK, Councilman Velez, as I can explain. Item number 41 and 42, it was an addendum. It was posted on the website on last Friday. It was mailed out. It was emailed to everyone who requested a copy. I can read 41 and 42. Item number 41 is a resolution of no confidence in the business administrator. Administrator, We did not have a resolution. We cannot vote on an item that the resolution is not present. Number 42 was the emergency temporary appropriation resolution. That was already adopted on an emergency meeting on June 8th. So um, those were 41 and 42. Now, that, those were emailed. It was given to, sent to the council members' now, home. Ma Madam Clerk, yes, and, and this is the thing. You said that 41 was resolution of no confident vote to who? The business administrator. And, and who was promoting that uh, uh, resolution? I was given this cycle to put on the agenda last night. Who Friday. was promoting the resolution? So, so we're not discussing. Uh, hold on. No, no, hold on. No, 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 no. no. Hold on a minute. Council hold President, on, hold, with all respect, hold on, No, 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 hold, hold on a minute, Councilman. Councilman, right now we have a motion, right? We're not discussing an item. We're not voting on the item. We have a motion to close the meeting, a first and a second. And if he was to, hold, hold on a minute. We're, no, we're not in we're the discussion. In discussion on the, no, we're in discussion of closing the meeting, no, not on discussion on those items. No, no. We had a discussion. Well, respect, Council, and you had the gaggle in front of you. Corporation Council, Madam don't Clerk. Go your way, you use the gaggle. Because you know what? Your birthday's coming up. I'm going to buy you a microphone to no, see my, if this no, doesn't No, hold continue. on. My birthday was May 2nd, and also The Rock was May 2nd. What I'm telling you is, Council President, that you opened a discussion for the item that was missing and it was announcing by numbers. I'm requesting the title. Now, she just stated the title. Now, who was promoting that resolution? No confidence on it. Because if I see the word city council, you didn't spoke to me to promote that resolution to me forward to this chamber. So, so let me. Who you spoke to involved those city council? 
As a council Let's president, as Who's council, councilman, I, I as council president, I could bring, council, I could, I could bring, a, I could bring an item. So put Flavio it. Rivera. Don't put city council. The resolution is not. The resolution is not done. What are you talking about, okay, councilman? So I, I just if the it. resolution was done, then I would have put my name on it. Okay, but there is no yes. resolution. Yes, council okay. president. It's an all these years, and all, all council these president. years here, and he still doesn't council get it. Council president, we have a motion president. to close the meeting. Can we council proceed president. closing the meeting? I, I, I'm just going to say this, because, you know, I mean, it is the ending of the meeting. Uh, Councilman Velez, and I'll say this respectfully, Madam Clerk needed to be more clear in terms of just stating it. So when we're, no, no, you did it correctly. Like, you said you read it. In, when you read it, you just said 41 and 42. And so mm -hmm. Councilman Velez did have the right to ask, Moving right. forward, I think this, this has been done. I've been here for almost eight years. There are times in a workshop where something is put on in terms of title only, okay? And then if you don't provide the, the information, the person who's putting it forth, and legal doesn't draft the resolution, then you cannot vote on it. Now, with that said, I'm not going to start a big argument at this time. I have a lot of reasons I'm going to be closing, and I'll be making my statements in terms of that item. But for right now, Council President, I do want to proceed with closing the meeting. There was a first. I second it. I'd like to vote so we can close. Yeah, I think there was a motion and a second on the floor. Yes, I second okay. it. And you, okay. Yeah, so I second May I continue so can, with? Council President, can you roll call to close? been trying. Roll call to close the, uh, the, the meeting. Right, yes, Mr. Clerk. President. Roll call to close the regular meeting of June 10, 2021. Okay. Councilman Abdelaziz. Thank you, Madam Clerk. And we're close to 10 minutes oh, no. of discussing something that will not oh. benefit the city at all. Once again, sorry to the residents of the city of Patterson. I hear people have been here years and years and years, and every day I see why and why I mean, more and more the dysfunction that comes out mm -hmm. of, of, and I see your frustrations. After nearly shutting down, after nearly shutting down the city, instead of taking a step forward to work with each other, we, ha we they want to discuss about more no confidence votes. What does that do? Once again, it's the same petty politics that comes here every single night. And I know to my residents, you, you see the frustrations in my, in my face. And I hope you're looking clearly to the people that are causing this chaos in this city. That's what it is, it's chaos. No confidence votes does not pick up your garbage. No confidence votes do not reduce your taxes. I wish we wasted 10 minutes talking about to reduce budget and how we're gonna reduce the levy. We just talked about 10 minutes of what brings this, what brings that. The people aren't stupid, they're watching. I know you're watching. I know my constituents in the sixth ward are watching, and they're fed up with the constant politics that comes out from this chamber. My vote is yes. Everyone have a great night. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Councilwoman um, Cotton. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Um, before I vote, I'd just like to say that, um, you know, I know we're back in, in, the, in, the, in the chambers now, and I just want to say we do encourage people to come in to, um, to the mic to voice your concern, because there are many concerns out there that our, our constituents are having. Um, and you know, I always say that we may not agree uh, on what we vote on, and, and I might vote differently than, than you vote. But one thing I, I say that you must learn to understand that we may not agree, but it still doesn't, you, you don't hold grudges because you don't agree, you know. And I said it when I first came on the city council. We might, I may vote yes, you may vote no, but at the end of the night, just learn how to say good night. Because, you know, we ain't, ain't gonna agree sometimes, but we're all here for working for the people. You know, I had went to, uh, 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 our fire department had a, uh, had a had luncheon for the dispatcher, and I remember um, uh, going to the, to, 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 the, to, to, the, to the bank, to the luncheon that they had, and, and I said to um, some of the dispatchers, and I know what our dispatchers go through. People calling them, they're cussing them, they're, they're yelling at them, they're screaming at them. And so I kind of like said, um, jokingly, I said, you know what, you get cussed out too, but I get cussed out too. Because people call us up and cuss us out too. So 
I know sometimes it's hard, but I, I just want to say to our dispatcher out there who has to take the brunt of a lot of the, the stuff that comes through. Even our secretaries take a brunt of a lot of the calls that come in because I'm sitting here and I'm listening to them when the calls are sometimes coming in. And you know, we know our job as legislators, we know that. But sometimes people now are calling because they need information, they need to be guided, they need to be sent to the right department. And so that's what I would say that, you know, we're here to not only as legislators, but also to help the community and to send them. I just want to also say to, um, to I want to give my condolences to Cynthia Freeman Davenport, who passed away. She was an educator here in our city of Patterson. She was actually my daughter, eighth grade teacher at public school number 13. She was also worked for the uh, Frederick Lagarde Academy over at Community Church of Love, which was on 12th, um, East 23rd and Broadway. Also, I want to invite you to the ribbon cutting ceremony for the historic event that's going to be named at Amnesty Park on June 12th at 12 o'clock on Villain Avenue, and it's the Villain Avenue Triangle Park. Um, you know, even though what we know what went through, people say you showboat. And a, one thing I know, and I don't know it all because I always said it before, I'm not a lawyer, but I know there's certain things that you cannot do, there's certain things you can do. And I know one thing, if you work, you're supposed to get paid. The law says if you work, you're supposed to get paid. Uh, Corporation counsel, I received your memo, you, late, you, you, you outlined it for us and that was what you were supposed to you outline it. If you work, you're supposed to get paid. Then I just want to say to your community out there that, you know, I know it's very, di very difficult out there for, for different things, but I'm going to wrap it up real quick. You know what? I've been here for going on nine years now. As a young kid, my uncle was a sharecropper. I lived in a house that had no bathroom, that had no running water. You know what? I never forgot the hard, hard times. And I can tell you what they try to do to us. They try to pin us against each other. If you worked in a big house or you worked on a farm, and they try to make us hate each other. But you know what? I had loving grandparents, aunts and uncles, moms and dad that said they were never going to make us hate each other. And that's what they try to do. But I came from a family that did not do that. Because if you've ever been slashed with a razor, it hurts. And that's what sometimes people want to do, just slash you up and make you feel bad. I'm not making my community feel bad. I'm going to do my best to uplift my community, because that's what I'm here for, to make sure I do my best. Madam Clerk, that being said, my vote is yes. Thank you, Councilwoman Cotton. Councilwoman Davila. As my first two colleagues that voted to close, you know, had statements, um, we always say that we are one body nine different minds, but when we vote, we vote for Patterson. But we also have the right to agree to disagree. It's great that certain council members get phone calls, emails, attend meetings, have committee meetings, and get the respect of the administration. But when you don't get that, and you actually go to the individuals, you let them know first verbally then you email them and they continue to be disrespectful, then I have the right to say, I have no confidence in you. I do have that right. Because I deserve the same right as my other colleagues that are able to get things done. As a councilwoman at large, I represent the entire city. There's two other individuals, Councilwoman Mims and Rivera. But I'm also in, in, in agreement, you know, this is not to create chaos. We all got to understand process. And I understand that before me, I know I didn't have a resolution to move forward with item 41, which was a vote of no confidence on our BA. I do have some items that I would add had I been asked. But moving forward, I want the same I represent an entire city, so I want the same respect, the same level of effort and, and um, um, I lost the word I wanted to use here, but I, I expect to be able to be treated the same because my vote is as good as the vote to my right and to my left and my entire colleagues. So we have a budget, Council President. 
I'd like to have some conversations with you in terms of some of the things that was passed in the uh, temporary appropriations for the month. There are certain concerns that I will continue to have in regards to the personnel committee and the way that we have been in my eyes, okay, and I believe, believe me, any constituent that wants to know specifically what I'm talking about, I invite you to set up a meeting to come to my office so I can give you specifics that I know that is public information. Uh, so with that said, thank you very much. My vote is yes to close the regular meeting. Thank you, Councilman Jackson. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Um, totally understanding and agreeing with uh, Councilwoman Davila, I'm just a tad bit different. Because <clears throat> I don't care if you disrespect me. <laughs> I, I'm from Patterson. I have tough skin. You can say whatever you want to say about me. You could call me any kind of name. You could do all, all of that. None of that matters. But the reality is, I'm sorry, ladies, you don't mind. The reality is, I am here representing other people's concerns. So the, the, when you go out of your way to disrespect me, you, you're disrespecting the people who I represent. You're not disrespecting me. I'm sound where I am. Um, yeah, there was an incident I had a few weeks ago with Councilman Velez. He made a statement about my son. That's the, the only time I'll be brought out of character if you make any type of derogatory intentions towards my family, all deal, all bets are off. Some people don't understand those parameters. So, so every now and then you'll give a pass. But let's keep it 100% real here, people. You have certain councilmen talking about unprofessionalism. I don't see it that way as being true and honest. Let me adopt someone else's term, true and real. This 41 was, on, was put, placed on the agenda by the council president. The council president failed to create the, the, uh, the agenda item, not anyone else. So if there was a failure, it was on his part. Now, I understand, uh, Councilwoman Cotton, we were given a, 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 you know, a, a response from the um, Corporation Council. I actually didn't even realize it was here. I just saw it now. Um, that talked about it's the law that we must pay our employees. The same law is applicable to begin with. When we, when we had a scare tactic to tell 1,500 employees that they weren't going to get paid on Friday. So the, the letter that went out from the BA, it holds the same merit. So we're going to sit here and talk about what we can't have one specific line item. The council, well, I won't argue that point right now. But I'll say this. This is the, probably the most deceitful, uncredible, dishonest, shameful, politically uh, 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 motived council that I've ever been a part of. I've watched Jeff Jones' administration be held accountable for $17,000, a $17,000 check. We, we have witnessed the council president create a, a, a scenario for himself. He was, it was a negotiated terms for himself. He had an issue with one specific employee Get, get, being given a job for 120000 but yet when it was an illegal hire of a zoning officer where the state wrote a letter and said clearly this person is unqualified to hold the position, plus he's not a city resident, went against the city ordinance, the council president, which I sat here and made a fuss about it every single night, council president didn't find issue with that. We didn't hold the administration accountable for that. That employee stayed on the books for three years while holding two other positions in two other municipalities until that person decided to resign. So how are we talking about accountability? I want to rest there because I'm anxious to see the notes that he's writing. I hope he's going to comment on the $50,000 increase he just got from the new job he got for doing exactly what he's told. Everyone knows the last time the vote of no confidence for the mayor came up because he's the one who on a group call 
with other council members, which I was a part of, he's the one who said, council members, put together the vote of no confidence on the mayor, and I will bring it forward. The very next day or next week, he reneged on that agreement because he took a phone call from someone from the, from the uh, uh, Democratic Party, and he pulled the item without consent or consulting with, uh, with other council members. Now these, again, as I consistently do, these are facts. So you bring forward, you insinuate or instigate a vote of no confidence against the mayor, and then you pull it because you're told. And then conveniently, we see the newspaper article where the guy's receiving a $50,000 increase. So Madam Clerk, you wrap it up? let me vote yes, because I'm, I'm patiently waiting Thank you, to Councilman see what this Jackson. rebuttal is uh, going to be. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Councilman Mendez. Councilman Mendez. Um, thank you, Madam Clerk. Um, so before my vote, I'll, I'm ready to go. let me just um, Don't. <laughs> talk about through the chair to Madam B.A. Madam B.A., at the, uh, the last meeting, I make a recommendation of the administration using the database that you guys have and about the call for services. In my case, um, every weekend I'm getting the same calls from the same location. In the city of Patterson, we have the same people breaking the law over and over. During the weekend, we love music and all kind of nonsense. So you got that data. Please, we have a quality of life unit. Pull that data and don't wait for a phone call. I think we don't have to call the radio room to know that on East 29 between 10 and 11, it's just out of control. That's every week. So if you get that, that's going to help us a lot. We understand that we don't have enough manpower. That's what we, that's the information that we're getting from the director of the police department. But we have to be creative. Um, if we get that information, we're going to be able to get into those locations before they start calling us. It's 17th Avenue. I have the same call every week in Madame B.A. I, being, I make a formal request about the administration and the director of the police department to sit down with the sheriff department because I don't see that collaboration. I'm in the road, I'm in the street day and night. I don't see that collaboration between the county and the city. We do need help, Madam B.A., in the city. Um, the violence in, in, is out of control in the city. Um, drug addict, homeless all over the place. Downtown Patterson, Madam B.A., we have a seat. We have an improvement district in downtown. If you look at the improvement district budget from the Bunking Hill, you will see the big difference between downtown and Bunk. I'm sorry, Councilman. So you will see the. I big wasn't difference. talking to you, Councilman. Allen. You will see the big difference between the downtown improvement district budget and the Bunking Hill. Eighty percent of this budget goes all, uh, on salary. What what this improvement district is doing for the downtown to control the homeless situation that we have? We're talking about safety. The, the administration have to sit down with that seat. Those business owners in downtown, they pay an additional tax for that improvement district. And I don't see any change, I don't see any improvement in the downtown, and that's something that the administration have to, gotta have that conversation. Um, in another note, uh, Madam B.A., um, the methadone truck right here, Madam B.A., right next to Center City Mall. Listen, this is my, my, why do we have to park that truck there one of the biggest problems that we have with those entities that are coming here to provide rehabilitation services is that they not be monitored. And I'll, if I'll be the mayor in and, and, and that position in the administration, I'll be rallying behind all those entities and holding them accountable for what they're doing because they make it, they're making an incredible amount of money through, uh, through uh, uh, Medicaid and all of that. And what are they doing to our city, Madam B.A.? After a week, you see those people out there in the street, and then it's become our problem. It, you know, I'm a legislator, but it, that's falling into the administration responsibility. Please take action on that. The, you know, the call for survey that we're getting, you already got the data. Please, let's work on that. And, and, and last but not least, to all the third world residents on 18th Avenue between East 33rd, 34th, 17th Avenue, six days ago with the rain that we have, that area was all flooded, there was water all over the place. When I called the department um, <coughs> to use a truck to clean the sewer line, those two trucks, they've been well, in, at the shop for the last six months. They've been broken down in the, in the yard. Uh, we, don't have, we don't have a truck to clean the sewer. That's very concerning to me. Um, and Madam B.A., if you could pay attention to that, at the last committee, we voted to fix one. Let's find a way to see if we could send the second truck to any other location to fix it, to do the maintenance on the sewer line. Patterson, to all my third world residents, thank you for all your calls or your texts. If you have any questions, if you need to reach out to me, 
you could call me directly on my cell phone, 973-930-1436. Good night, Patterson. God bless you all. Your vote, Councilman. Your vote. Councilman, your vote. Oh, my vote is yes, Madam Clark. Thank Sorry, you. Too. Councilman Mintz. So tonight, I really made it my, my business that I was going to stay calm, remain professional, not even elongate my dialogue, and I wanted to stick to that. And I did, because I see the comments, I hear the concerns, and I get the calls. So I wanted to do that tonight just to say, okay, let's see how everything will fizzle out. And I know sometimes, you know, it looks like there's always tobacco and, and this tug of war. But I don't think it's that. I think sometimes it's the passion that, you know, we have as council members. We're trying to get things done, trying to work with the administration. And then we hear the concerns of the community. And when it's not getting resolved, we get the cause or we get the blunt of, you know, the commentary. And so um, I'm not just going to do it tonight. That's going to be my position going forward. Um, because it's, it's something that is needed. I just want to go over some of the, uh, the uh, events that will be taking place uh, to the family of Miss Cynthia Freeman, who I've known for a very long time. I want to thank her for her consistency throughout the years. Uh, my daughter went to LaGarde Academy when she was two years old, and Miss Cynthia was one of the people that always present, very consistent, very loving, and we're gonna miss Miss Freeman. And she, her funeral service will be this Friday at Seminary Baptist Church, 193 Heldon Ave. The viewing is from five to seven, and the celebration will be at seven o'clock um, to celebrate the life and the legacy of Miss Cynthia Freeman. Bronte Carnival will be at Westside Park. It's been going on this week. We want to thank Bronte and Bron Shields for coming together. Uh, 6 p.m. nightly, please go out. On Saturday morning, it is the closeout of the T-Ball tourna Tournament at the Larry Dobiefield at 9 o'clock. At 12 o'clock will be the Amistad uh, Park Ribbon Cutting Ceremony at 12. And then at 2 o'clock, Nifty will be honoring they are football players. And then on Sunday. We need quorum. We need a quorum. Councilwoman Council. Cotton, we need a quorum. We, we need, need a quorum. A quorum. Uh, and then on Sunday. <laughs> and then on, on, on Sunday, we will be. So, uh, on Sunday, we will be celebrating uh, 74 years of a life well a life well lived of our councilwoman, uh, Vera Ames. Patterson, let's keep moving together. I'm praying for all of our students as you're in the process of doing your finals. I'm with my son in his finals. He's a high school senior. My heart goes out to all of our students, all of our teachers, and to the community at large. Good night, God bless you. My vote is yes. Thank you, Councilman Velez. Hopefully, who are Hopefully, whoever is being present from this point on, um, you know, could control all the quorums and all the council members in the chambers before the meeting is ending. You know, everybody want to get out of here, go home, have supper, or whatever. You know, my question before is to read on the title, what was the 41 and 42? Because I didn't have it in my agenda. I don't know what they were talking about. So I'm not a fan or promoter of no confidence vote in the city of Patterson. I'm not a fan and also up either promoter of no confidence vote on anyone. I always say that the chief of command of this city, the mayor, is the one in charge. He's the one that choose his A staff, his department, the BA, the police department chief, the fire department chief, the DPW director, 
the Department of Health director, the Department of Counter Development, the Department of Human Services, <coughs> and the uh, anybody that he hired to represent his uh, administration. The law department, corporate counsel. I always say, if I have a problem with them, I will have a conversation with them. And if I have no confidence, I will look into who put them there. Then I have no confidence in the person that decides to put them there. So, and then I have to balance the good and the bad. What have been good in the administration, what have been bad in the administration. And one thing I always have in mind is that all of us here, sitting here in this day, anybody sitting in that chairs over there watching this meeting, those people are in the house, the BA, everybody here, the lawyer, attorney, and I will wrap it up. For God's sake, we have families. Our kids watch this meetings. Our relative watched those meetings. And probably what it is a political agenda turns into hurting families, hurting those of you out there. Let me tell you, I'm saying this by heart, Council President, and, and my, uh, my son calls me and say, Dad, you did great. But at the same time, he could call me and say, Dad, what's going on with that Council President always charging you down? or the other councilmen trying to belittle you or bully you. They see out there, your family, your kids see, watch these meetings. Take it for granted, laugh or whatever you wanna do. But let me tell you something. One thing I could say is, the day I'm not sitting in this chair, I could leave this city in peace and knowing that the time that I was here, I did it with a clean heart and the hands clean, not damaging nobody's reputation, and making sure that the concern was only the community concern, not a personal or political agenda. Saying that, Council President, hopefully we could keep on continuing working, making sure the city move forward. God bless America, God bless everyone, Thanks God that he gave us a chance to be here today. And I know you don't like this council president, but God bless you and your family for tomorrow we could see each other and praise the Lord together one day. God bless you. Good night. My word is yes. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank God there's a camera there and every meeting is recorded. So, Asking my colleagues to maintain the quorum in these days, I guess it's offensive to them. I, I, I'm just scared for the city if, if the people that, that are here, and I, and I don't listen, try to belittle my council colleagues, but it's disturbing that you have council members voting on things for years and they don't even know what they're voting on. Disturbing, we don't have to know everything. But you have to try at least to learn. You know, you're, you're making decisions on behalf of the people that elected you. Now, going back to a comment, and I didn't want to talk about it because that wasn't the intent. First of all, my decisions are driven not on politics like some other people. I've been being pushed the whole term that I've been president to put non-confidence vote on the mayor on the BA, but those, was those were politically driven. I understand we were frustrated at the time because we were trying to get the administration to work with us. We listened to the people, and it was just frustration because we need to govern together. You can't just say you're the council and we're the administration. They're interpreting the law. So they're basically saying you're the council body. You're only there to legislate and approve our budget, right? But we're the ones listening from the public of their concerns, but we're not, we don't have a seat at the table. We need to govern together. Now, Madam BA and I sat down and we spoke, because this is not personal. What I do is not personal. One of my council colleagues, once again, well, 
I'm not even going to pass some uh, negative comments, but you, you read what's going on in the newspaper. So you want to talk about honesty? Don't, t don't hear it from me. You make your own judgment. But talking about, listen, my council colleague here next to me, Councilman Jackson, he just stated that I didn't have an issue with the hiring. We, we're not the hiring authority. The only way I could, I could hold the administration from hiring somebody is controlling the funds that they have available to either give a raise or to hire. If my colleagues understand how to get things done, we will get things done. The difference is that when they hire those other people, they already had, a, they already had the money in the budget. And second of all, that's his opinion. The administration hired someone. I'm not here to say, oh, that person's qualifying, that's not. In the past, we had a conversation. This, this gentleman here have done double standards. One time he wanted to enforce the residency requirement on one or two people, but not the rest. I try to be fair with everybody. That's not how I operate. I'm not here to, to say that the, the action that I took about the $120,000 was not about the, about the gentleman. It's about the action, the principle, the, the, the public you know, perception out there, the morale of the employees. And, and the reason that, that even that got there by title is because we didn't get the courtesy of a conversation. We, was, we had a conversation for months, and they still wanted to proceed, and we need to govern together. Um, I'm not going to address the other comments because they're not factual at all. Uh, you see what goes on in this council. Council members just like to make up things. Uh, that, that article actually came out. Uh, this gentleman here started calling the, the press, making up stories with no basis on it. I'm a person that's qualified for that position. But it's funny. 16 years in municipal government, certifications, experience, and everything. And this guy, you know, this guy just, just has it for me since I became a president, president of this council, because he wanted to be president. And it's shameful that you're using the time that we're supposed to use here to govern and make decisions on behalf of the people. You, use, you try to use it for political gain. This is a person that has spent the last three years since I've been here, he hasn't been able to accomplish one thing in this council. He never gets support from his colleagues, not even for me. And I try to work with everybody. But everything has motives, everything this person does. This person, I, matter of fact, resign tomorrow if this person could explain to me how the budget works here. Doesn't understand it. You saw it today in the comments about Oh, we have something else in the budget by title. And I want to apologize for extending this meeting, but I, I'm just, it's just sickening that we use this time to talk about all this nonsense when we have better things to do in this city. So I just hope whoever's the next council president, that whatever happened during my tenure, because it was planned, this whole thing was planned. If you go back to the videos, there was a group of like three people, and I'm not going to say who, but just you, you could see what happened. They tried to sabotage all the meetings. And if you go back to the other years when other people were council presidents, and even before I was on this council, these people never behaved this way. So it was something personal because they could, they could never be president. You should call people. They could never, I don't name. have to do that. Call I'm not here, I'm not here for that. Fool. I let the people don't be the judge, vaguely. see? Call what people by and name. another thing, Councilman Velez, you're not, you're not the only one that was threatened. This guy whispered over here some, some words to me, and I'm not the one that, you know what? I'm okay. just going to leave it at point that. Point order, point order, Councilman. My vote is yes. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. The vote is eight, eight in favor. <laughs> Bring the Eight in favor, leads. one absent. The regular meeting of June 10, 2021 is hereby adjourned. Good night, everyone. Thank you very much. Bring the police. I'm going to reveal the truth every single night. Every single night. I'm a